What is up party people? Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. My name is Daryl Wilson and today in this video I'll be showing you guys how to create an e-commerce website with WordPress step by step. In this e-commerce tutorial, we'll be using free tools. We'll be using a free WordPress theme and a free drag and drop page builder. So you don't need to have any experience with websites whatsoever and we'll be using a free plugin called WooCommerce to build your e-commerce website. The e-commerce website we're going to make today looks really stunning. In this e-commerce tutorial, I'll be creating a website that sells sports equipment. And of course, you guys can sell any type of product you want with this e-commerce tutorial. So after watching this video, you guys will be able to sell any type of product you want on your e-commerce website, and you'll also become WordPress pros. And for your first e-commerce website, it's gonna look amazing. Much better than my first e-commerce website, right? We're gonna incorporate modern designs to make sure you have a high converting e-commerce website. So go ahead and pull up a chair, grab your favorite drink, and let me show you guys the e-commerce website that we're gonna make today in this video. Okay, so here is the e-commerce website I'll be showing you guys how to make today in this video. As you guys can tell, it's a really clean yet stylish landing page for an e-commerce website. So here we go. You know, we have our logo here at the top left. If you guys need a logo, don't worry. I'll be showing you guys how to get a really nice logo for your e-commerce website. We have our menu here at the top right. We have this really cool Lottie animation. So I will be showing you guys how to add in really nice Lottie animations that are very lightweight that bring a lot of style to your e-commerce websites. Here we have the main text of our page, right? So this is really telling people, yeah, go buy it. Here we have some description. Then we have some buttons here that link to our shop page and also our contact us page. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down here. Next, we have some general like upsells, right? So this is just a wide range of products, quality and authenticity, competitive pricing. And then maybe we can even change this to like, you know, great fast shipping, right? Something like that. So I'll go ahead and scroll down here. So next we have product categories. So most of you guys probably have different categories for your e-commerce website. So I will be showing you guys how to create different product categories. So for example, this right here is uh, sports. This one in the middle is swimwear. And then this one over here is hiking shoes. And if they were to click on these, this would take them directly to those specific product categories. So you will have a really nice organized e-commerce website as well. So next we have our freshest products and I really wanted to emphasize these products because these are like the main cornerstone products of our website. So here we have a variety of shoes, right? We have black shoes, white shoes, running shoes, and you just can actually scroll over here and take a look at all of the other shoes right here. And it's a really convenient, easy way to shop on your websites. And then they can just add it to the carts and then purchase it right away. So I will be showing you guys how to create this same style for your uh, e-commerce store. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. Next, we have like a newsletter banner, and this typically is used for collecting email addresses. So once you guys build a user base, we can build this section right here and then have users subscribe to our websites. This was actually all created with AI. It's actually crazy. So I'll be showing you guys how to use AI to build different parts of your websites. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. So next we have our flash section. And generally guys, you wanna create urgency for your websites, right? So here we have a 24 hour sale. You guys ever seen that movie, um, Wolf of Wall Street, right? Urgency is everything. So here we're creating uh, urgency for these products, right? So we have all these products right here and they're only on sale for 24 hours to really encourage people to purchase our products. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. So next we have the blog section and here we have various blog articles that relate to our websites. Now we actually use AI to create these articles and I will be showing you guys how to use AI to create really high quality blog posts for your website. Now blog posts are a great way to get organic traffic to your website. So I will be covering that a little bit in this video. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. So here I got a little crazy, you know, we just added in this really nice design, you know, we have like our partners here. You guys can, you know, add in your partners, you can add in other websites, but this is just like a little banner section with just images, right? And if we scroll down here, we have a really nice footer here at the bottom where we have our logo, some description, products, pages, and then the contact us section. So let's go ahead and click on this button right here and scroll back to the top. Okay, so now that we've seen our home page, let's take a quick look at our shop page. Okay, so this is our shop page. And as you guys can tell, it's a really clean yet simple shop page. So here we showcase all of our products. We have a banner on the left side. We have a sidebar where users can filter by price. And we even have videos where users can actually take a look at live videos for your e-commerce websites, right? So right here, you'll see that we can filter by price, right? We can mess around with this right here. 
and automatically the website will actually adjust to only have products within that specific price range. So that is really helpful. You just can also sort by popularity, by latest, by low to high, and so on and so forth. And then right here we have popular products. This is a great way on how to recommend the most purchased product on your website to get as much sales as possible. And then also here on the sidebar, we have this product demo where you just can actually just click on this, right? And uh, yeah, they can watch a video right here. You know, it's pretty awesome. So we can actually mix and match these widgets here on the left side. So I will be showing you guys how to create a custom sidebar right here where you can add as many elements as you want for your e-commerce store. Okay, so now let's take a look at one of our products. Let's go ahead and take a look at our product page. So next we have our product page, and this is a very simple yet standard product page. So here we have the title of our product, right? We have the price, we have extra features, and I love this right here. This will really build up confidence for your products and really encourage people to take action and buy your products. And then below that we have some description. So you guys can create as much description and talk about your products as much as you want right here. And then on the left side, we have this image right here where users can actually hover over it to get a really clear and concise view of your products. And if we scroll down here, you just can actually add this to the carts. They can click on add to cart. And then also right here, we have this PayPal fast checkout. So they can actually click on this and purchase it really quickly through the PayPal payment gateway. Below that, we have guaranteed safe checkout. You know, that's always that's always good to have, right? It's always just, you know, just more confidence. Here we have some description. And this is something where if you guys wanna talk about the material or where it's from, something more technical, you guys can put that right here. You guys can also have reviews right here for your products as well. And then below that, we have some related products. So we can always recommend more products when users are already viewing our current product. Pretty cool, right? All right. So let's go ahead now and add this to the carts, right? So we'll just change this to one and add that to the cart. And now let's view the cart. Okay, here we go. So we got our base running shoes right here and we can actually add coupons. We can adjust this to add more running shoes right here, right? And we will talk more about taxes and shipping in this video. So we are gonna have automated taxes and a really fast way to check out on your website. So I'll be covering that more later in the video. So for right now, I'll click on proceed to checkout. And then right here, we'll go ahead and scroll down. So your users will have this area right here where they can enter in their contact information. They can create an account directly on your website. They can log in right here. And if they don't have an account, they can just click on create an account. You guys can choose to make this mandatory or not. It's really up to you, but I'll be talking more about that in the WooCommerce general settings. And then right here, they'll enter in their billing address and then their payment options. So here we have cash on delivery, we have credit card, and we also have PayPal. Now this is a live e-commerce website, so I'll go ahead and fill out this information right here and check out directly on this e-commerce website. So I went ahead and I filled out the contact information and also the billing address. I'll go ahead and scroll down now and we're gonna enter this credit card on the websites and we're gonna buy something right away. Now, if you guys do wanna test this yourself to see how the experience works, you guys can actually access this website. There is a link in the description. I'll go ahead and enter in my secret credit card here, right? And we're gonna enter all this in. Now guys, this is in demo mode, right? Test mode, so don't worry about it, right? This is not a real credit card, but you guys can enter just 4242 and you guys can test this out by yourself. All right, so there's my secret credit card. Now let's go ahead and click on place order. And look at that. The user now is brought to a checkout page where they can actually view their order number, their email, their payment method, they'll see the product and also the billing address right here. So as of right now, the user has successfully purchased something on the e-commerce website, and this money is sent directly to your payment merchant account where you can withdraw it right away to your bank. Now, once the user actually buys something, they'll actually have an account created for them automatically, which is amazing. So here's the customer's portal, and here they can access their orders. They can view it, right? So it shows the data was purchased, the status, and then they can view it, right? Also, if they have bought some downloadable products, they can download their products right here. So you guys can use this store to create virtual and also downloadable products. And I will be showing you guys how to do that. But uh, once they purchase something like an ebook or something, or like a get rich guru book or whatever, you, they can download them right here. And then here we have the addresses, right? So this is the address and you guys can always update this address if you want to change the shipping address and stuff like that. Here we have payment methods. So you guys can always add a payment method right here. So you guys can add in your credit card to the website and then that'll be stored so the user can purchase more of the products really easily. 
And then below that, we have some account details where they can adjust the details for their customer portal as well. So all in all, you guys will see it's a really convenient process. And once the customer actually buys something on your website, an email will be sent to them automatically. Now, whenever you make a sale on your website, you'll be notified via email that you have a new sale and your customers will be automatically emailed a purchase receipt about the purchase on your e-commerce websites. Also, I'll be showing you guys how to create this really nice about us page. So right here, we have this about us page and I will be giving you guys this template for free just for following along in this video, right? So this is gonna be the about us page where you can, you know, talk about your company, you can provide them more information. And all you gotta do here, guys, is just change the images and everything to something that reflects your e-commerce websites. And then lastly, we have the contact us page where users can actually send questions they might have about your e-commerce store. So they can go ahead and fill in their first name, their last name, their email, and then they can give you a comment or message about the products on your e-commerce store. So all in all, this is a fully functional e-commerce website. It's really modern and up-to-date, and I'm really excited to show you guys how to make this. So let's go ahead and create your e-commerce website with WordPress. Plus, you guys can create any type of e-commerce website you guys want with this video. You guys can create a sports website, a furniture website, electronics websites. You guys can create any type of e-commerce website you want with this e-commerce tutorial with no restrictions. In this video, I'll also be showing you how to create a variety of products. I'll first be showing you how to create a simple product. A simple product is a product with no variables, just the add to cart option. Next, we have a variable product. A variable product is a product with multiple variables such as size or color. Here, the user can select specific sizes or color on their product. Then when they select it, the image will change according to what the user selects. This is ideal for most people because they might have products with multiple variables such as size or color. Next, we have a group product. A group product is a product with multiple sizes for one specific product. For example, an iPhone with multiple memory sizes like 128 gig, 256 or 512 would be ideal. For this tutorial, I just use a basketball with multiple sizes. You can create this product just in case you have products with multiple sizes within one product. You can also create a virtual product. A virtual product would be something like a service, like a consultation or a coaching session. You can also create digital downloadable products. If you wanna offer something like a recipe, a workout plan, or any type of digital products, you can offer digital products directly on your e-commerce websites. We're also gonna make sure your website is blazing fast. We are gonna run your e-commerce website through the Google PageSpeed Insights and you're gonna have an A PageSpeed score after you make your websites. We're also gonna make sure your e-commerce website is fully mobile optimized. I'll be showing you how to fully optimize your website for all devices such as desktop, tablets, and phones. We are gonna run your website through the Google Mobile Checker and make sure your website is fully compliant for all search engines. And the best part, we offer tons of templates for e-commerce websites that you guys can easily import on your website with one click. And I'll be talking about these later in the video. Now, creating an e-commerce website is actually a really exciting feeling. It is a pretty cool feeling when you're sleeping and at the same time, you could be making money, right? I own two e-commerce websites. I own a coffee website, EnderWilson.com. We average around ten dollars to $15,000 a month in sales, and we'll be using the same free plugin that I'll be showing you guys how to use today in this video. So you guys can you know, watch this with confidence knowing that it's a plugin that people actually use on real e-commerce websites, right? Now, if you guys like what you've seen so far, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Go ahead and press that like button and let me know in the comments what kind of e-commerce website you are building in the comments below. And with that said, let's go ahead and start this WordPress tutorial. We are gonna build your e-commerce website in six simple steps. Step one, we'll get our domain and web hosting. A domain is the name of your e-commerce websites like mycoolshop.com and web hosting will host your website online 24 hours a day. In step two, design the websites. I'll be showing you how to build your e-commerce website with a very simple drag and drop builder. I'll be showing you how to design the home page, the about us page, and the contact page. We're gonna build all these pages from scratch so you know how to use the page builder. In section three, we'll create products. I'll be showing you how to create a variety of products for your e-commerce websites. I'll show you how to add prices and product descriptions for all of your products. In section four, we'll complete the websites. We are fully gonna design the website, such as the home page, the about us page, the shop page, and contact page. You're gonna have a fully completed e-commerce website by this section of the video. In section five, the theme options. In section five, I'll be showing you how to use the WordPress theme. The WordPress theme can bring more style to your website, such as different shop page layouts, different product page styles, and adjusting the fonts and colors on your product page. 
In section six, I'll be showing you the WooCommerce settings. Here, we're gonna adjust our shipping, adjust our taxes, and integrate payment gateways. We will integrate Stripe and PayPal to accept credit card payments directly on your e-commerce websites. Plus, you guys are gonna have automated taxes. We will add a free plugin to automatically calculate the taxes for all your visitors, no matter where you are located. Does that sound amazing? Well, let's go. So next, let's go to step one. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase fast cloud web hosting. Okay, and this is Hostinger.com. Now Hostinger.com is among one of the more reliable web hosts. They have great support and a free domain when you guys use my link in the description. Now once you guys are here at the top left, if you click on this language tab, you guys can change the website to other various languages. So if you speak Spanish or you speak Dutch, or Romanian or Japanese or whatever language that you want, you guys can go ahead and select your language right here. I'm gonna go ahead and select United States. Now at the top right, you're gonna see hosting. So if I click on hosting right here, let's now click on web hosting. Next, we're gonna see this claim deal. So let's click on claim deal and this will bring you to three different plans. So here we have three different plans, right? We have the premium, we have the business and we have the cloud startup. Now for an e-commerce website, I would definitely recommend business or better. Generally for e-commerce websites, they do require more resources and more storage. So I do not recommend premium for this video. So you guys can always go with the business to get started and you guys can always upgrade to the cloud startup a little bit later in your customer portal. So for now, just to get started, we can just go with the business plan. So right here, I'll click on add to carts. Okay, and the next thing is the time period. So here we have four different options, right? We have one month, 12 months, 24 months, and 48 months. Now, I would definitely recommend going with 12 months. 12 months will give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. And you guys also get a free domain if you guys go with a 12 month or better plan. And just remember, you guys do get a 30 day money back guarantee for any reason. So you guys can always get your money back just in case this didn't work out for you. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down here. Next, we're going to talk about selecting a payment. And the cool thing is they take crypto. So you guys can use credit card. You guys can use PayPal, Google Pay, and also CoinGate, which I believe is cryptocurrency. Now, right here, you'll enter in your first name, your last name. You'll put in your country of residence, yada, yada, yada. And then you'll put your social security number. I'm just kidding, guys. You don't put that in. It's a joke. All right. <laughs> it's a joke. All right, and below that, we have this option right here where we can enter a coupon code. Now, $59, guys, for a year of hosting is already dirt cheap, right? But we can actually use my coupon code, which will save you guys even more money. So right here, I'll click on have a coupon code, and we're gonna enter the coupon code Daryl10, and then click on apply. And this will actually save you guys a little bit more money. So the price went from $59 all the way to $53. And of course, if you guys do upgrade to cloud hosting, this also applies for cloud hosting and all the plans at hostinger.com. All right, and once you guys go ahead and fill out all your information and you guys enter in your credit card information, you'll then click on the submit and secure payments. Once you guys do this, I will meet you guys on the very next page. Okay, so when you guys sign up, it'll bring you to this page right here. Now they're gonna ask you various questions, but I do recommend to skip it and just install WordPress. So at the bottom right here, I'll click on skip. So next it's gonna ask us what tools we want to use to build our website with. I also recommend to skip this because they're just going to install a bunch of various plugins and themes that we're also not gonna use. So at the bottom right here, again, let's click on skip. Okay, so next you're gonna enter in your domain name. Now think long and hard because this is the actual name of your website. In case you guys are total noobs and are still not sure what a domain name is, it is typically the address of your website where people enter to access your website. So think long and hard and just go ahead and enter it right here. I'll go ahead and enter a domain name here. So I entered in Wilson Daryl Tutorial. And what's also cool is they do give you other suggestions for other domain names. So that's also pretty helpful. So right here, I'll claim my free domain and then I'll click on next. Okay, so next you guys need to enter in your personal information on who actually owns this domain. This is typically required by ICANN laws and it also is helpful if you guys ever want to sell your domain because you can claim ownership of your personal domain. So right here, I'll just say this is personal and then I'll go ahead and click on next step. So next you'll enter in your contact details. And this is important because this will show where your business was registered. You guys can also use your business address or where your business was incorporated. Once you guys fill out this information at the bottom right here, we'll then click on finish registration.
So next we have the target audience. So you're gonna select the location of where you are doing business, and this will actually lead to faster loading times. For example, I'm in the United States, so I'm gonna select United States. However, if I do business in France or something, I can always select like France if my, you know, my audience is in France, but uh, I'm in the United States, so I'm just going to select the United States region right here. And this will actually lead to faster loading times for this specific audience. So I'm gonna go ahead and select United States and then I'll click on next. Okay, so this is the hosting or dashboard, and this is where you guys can access all the information about your domain name. Now, the very first thing that you guys will need to do is verify the domain that you guys purchased. So you guys will go ahead and check the email inbox right here, and you guys are gonna see an email from Hostinger. This is important because they need to verify the domain that it's actually you. So go ahead and verify this information. Now, the first thing I'll do is verify my email address for Hostinger, so right here, I'll click on verify email. Then I'll click on confirm. Okay, now we're not done just yet. We'll also need to go back here and we'll need to verify the domain in the actual email. So let's go over here to inbox. And then right here, it's gonna say, verify your contact information for your domain. I'll click on this email. And then right here, I'll click on this link. I'll go ahead and click on confirm. And that's it. So our domain has now been verified by Hostinger. So let's go back to our dashboard over here. And now let's go ahead and just refresh this page. And after that, you guys will see that all of the notices have disappeared and our domain is now fully active. Now let's install WordPress. So over here on the bottom left, you'll see websites. Right here, you'll see WordPress. Go ahead and click on WordPress. Now it's going to say install WordPress. So right here, I'll click on install. So next we're gonna create some login credentials. So make sure that you guys do write this down. And this is important because you guys will need this information when you want to log in and log out of WordPress, right? So I'll go ahead and put Daryl Wilson tutorial. This is my email address. This is important because if you guys do forget your WordPress password, it will be sent to this specific email on file. You'll create a username and then also a password. Once you guys create this information here at the bottom right, you'll click on next. So now it's gonna ask us which version of WordPress we want to install. Just always go with the recommended because this is usually the most stable and up to date. So at the bottom right here, I'll click on install. Okay, so once you guys click on install WordPress, it'll bring you to this dashboard right here. Now to log into your website with Hostinger, all you gotta do is click on this admin panel and this will log you into WordPress and also your website. So go ahead and click on admin panel. And ta-da, your website is now published. If you guys wanna see your WordPress dashboard, here on the left side, you'll click on dashboard. And this is your primary WordPress dashboard. Like this is basically where all the magic happens. Now, if you guys wanna see what your website looks like right now, here at the top left under my WordPress, I'll click on visit sites. And this is our WordPress website. It's using a default WordPress theme and they just kind of threw in some demo content, like some content and some images and stuff like that. So yeah, this is just a demo website they've created for us, but not to worry, we're gonna make this site look amazing. So let's go back over here to our WordPress dashboard. All right, congratulations on getting your domain and web hostings. Pretty simple, right? Now let's go to the next section. So in this part of the video, I'll be introducing you guys to the WordPress general options. We'll be messing with the general options, installing a page builder, and also installing a free WordPress theme. So I'll be showing you guys all the basic fundamentals of WordPress in this part of the video. You guys ready? Let's go. Now, before going any further, I first wanna introduce you guys to some of the general settings. So over here under the users, let's first click on a profile. Okay, now here we can adjust the admin color scheme in the back end, right? So you guys can actually change this to like modern or lights. I think this was actually the very first one that was created. It's really, really ugly, right? But uh, hey, you know, people out there. Uh, here we have blue, you can change it to coffee. Ectoplasm, which is like super, yeah, it's weird. But uh, I'm gonna select midnight. I think this one's just the easiest on the eye, right? So I'm gonna select midnight. We're gonna scroll down. And if you guys do ever want to update your password for WordPress, this is where you guys can do it. And this is important because if you guys forget your password, it will be sent to the specific email that you have on file, okay? All right, let's go ahead and scroll down. And here we have the account management. This is where you guys can always update your WordPress password. So this is where you guys can update it. Okay, once you guys do that, we'll then click on update profile. Next, we'll go over here and go to settings and click on general. 
you guys can give your website a name and you guys can always change this later, right? They'll just put like my e-commerce websites, my e-commerce websites and the best place to buy. I don't know. This does appear in the search engine, but we'll talk more about SEO a little bit later in this video. Here, you guys can also adjust the email as well. This is just another second place where you guys can adjust it, right? And here we have membership. So you guys do wanna turn this on. This is actually important because this will give the people the ability to create an account where they can access their dashboard, update their credit card information, and also update their address. So make sure you guys do have this checked. Also, if you guys do speak various languages, you guys can actually change it to like so many different languages, right? To Thai, to Japanese, to Polish, to Dutch, to all these various languages, okay? And then once we apply those settings, I'll then click on save changes, okay? Now there's one other important option that I wanna set, and that is under the permalinks option. So let's click on permalinks. You guys always wanna set your permalink settings to post name. This is actually critical for SEO. So for example, you'll see it's our website slash about us, right? Or slash shop. Not all these like archives and numbers and things just don't make any sense. Post name is actually optimal for SEO and it'll help your site get ranked much better with this permalink structure. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down here and then we'll click on save changes. Okay, now let's go ahead and click back on our dashboard. So next, let me show you guys how to log in and log out of your WordPress website so you guys can work on it from any location. At the top right, I'm gonna click on log out. And this basically like kicks me out of my website, right? So if I go to my website now and I press enter, you guys will now see that there is no little bar right there, so I can't log in. So I can still view the website, right? But I just can't log in. If you guys do wanna log into your website, all you gotta do is go to your domain name and type in dash wp-admin and then press enter. Next, you guys will be prompted to this WordPress login screen. And here you guys can enter in your username or your email address, and then you'll enter in your password. These credentials were created when you guys first installed WordPress onto the domain, okay? So here, I'll click on Remember Me, and then I'll click on Login. All right, cool. So that's how you guys can log in and log out of your WordPress websites. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're now going to install a WordPress theme. So over here under Appearance, let's click on Themes. At the top, I'll click on Add New Theme. And here's a list of themes. Now, before we install the WordPress theme, let me first explain what a WordPress theme is and what does it do for your website? First, let's talk about what is a WordPress theme. Every website you make with WordPress requires a specific WordPress theme. Without getting too techy, a WordPress theme is a general style and layout of your current website. Each WordPress theme has different options in the theme customizer. The options can range from a header and a footer builder, different blog post layouts, controlling the width of your website like a blocks or a full width, or specific e-commerce features like product layouts or different shop page layouts. A WordPress theme generally controls the layout and style of your current WordPress website. A WordPress theme does not build the website itself, but it's more of an outside shell for the page builders and a starting point to build your WordPress website. Feel free to check out many of the WordPress themes to find a style that fits for you and your WordPress website. You guys got that? So there are tons of different WordPress themes and I've probably used almost all of these themes. And I know the best ones, you know, in fact, I actually made a video on it. But for this specific video, we're going to use the Bloxy theme. Bloxy. Bloxy is one of the most popular themes and it has just tons of features for an e-commerce websites. So here is the theme that we're gonna use. Over here, we'll click on install and then we'll click on activate. Now here it's saying, uh, do you want to install the Bloxy companion? Sure, I'll go ahead and install this. This essentially gives it a little bit more features by using their plugin. Now here are the Bloxy theme options, but uh, we're not gonna mess with these right now. We're gonna come back to the theme options a little bit later in this video, okay? Now, one thing I also do wanna note about WordPress themes, guys, you can always switch between themes and you will not lose your website, you will not lose your products. So later down the road, if you guys are building your website and you're saying, hey man, I wanna try out another WordPress theme, you guys can always go ahead and do that and switch to any themes that you guys choose, okay? Now that I showed you guys how to install a theme, let's go ahead and go over here to plugins and let's add some plugins. So right here, I'll click on add new plugin. Now at the top right under search plugins, I wanna install some plugins. We're going to install a page builder, an add-on, and also a caching plugin. 
So the first thing we're going to do is install the Elementor Page Builder. This is the page builder that's going to allow us to build our website. It is the most popular page builder and it is actually a great page builder. I've used it on several websites and um, it is the number one page builder and it's completely free. So right here under the Elementor Website Builder, we'll go ahead and click on Install Now and then we'll click on Activate. Now it's gonna prompt you with this little annoying uh, wizard right here. We don't need to follow this, so we're just going to close this at the top right. I'll just go ahead and close it. Okay. Next over here under plugins, we're going to add another one. So right here, add a new plugin. And we're also gonna type in premium add-ons. Okay. Now we're going to install this plugin right here. This essentially is an add-on for Elementor that gives it a lot more features. It gives you a lot of animations and the ability to add WooCommerce products to your homepage. So right here, we'll click on install now, and then we'll click on activate. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and close these really annoying notices, guys. That's You're gonna come to find that they like to spam like banners in the back and just, just close it. It's really annoying. All right, and the last one we are going to install is a caching plugin. So over here, add new plugin. We're gonna spell cache, C-A-C-H-E. And here is the plugin we're going to install. It's called Lightspeed Cache. We're going to install another plugin near the end of the video that will actually make your website blazing fast. But for now, we don't really need it because our website's empty. So let's go ahead and activate this plugin. So this gives us the ability right here to actually purge all of our cache so we can have a really fast websites, okay? So now that I showed you guys how to, you know, basically install the theme and the plugins, now let's create some pages for our website. You'll see our website, you know, the structure has changed a little bit. It's kind of empty. So let's just make some pages and then also add them to the menu. Okay. So let's go over here to dashboard. So over here, let's click on all pages. So here we have a list of pages. Now these pages are like the default pages that are created automatically when you install WordPress. So we don't need these pages. So let's just go ahead and delete these. I'll go over here and I'll just move those to trash. Okay. So at the top, I'll click on add new page. I'll close this. And then we're gonna add in the home page, right? So the home page, you'll click on publish and publish. Next, I'll click on add new page again. And we're going to add in the About Us page, right? Here, I'll click on Publish and Publish. And lastly, we're gonna make one more page and that is the Contact page. I don't know, Contact, Contact Us. I guess either one will work, right? I'll just, I'll just do Contact, you know, there you go. I'll click on Publish and Publish. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our website. So over here under visit sites, you'll see the pages now display right here. But the thing is, I want to actually rearrange this menu and I actually want to set our home page as our current home page. Cause right now it's still like using the blog post page as our home page. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go back over here to dashboard and over here under appearance, let's click on menus. So go ahead and give your menu a name. This is gonna be the primary menu, right? Primary menu. And then I'll select header menu one, which is essentially our main menu. So right here, I'll click on create menu. Now on the left side, you're gonna see pages. So let's click on view all pages. And now you guys are gonna see we have four pages, right? Let's just add all of them. I know there's two home pages, but that's okay. So I'll go ahead and click on all of those and click on add to menu. So here we have a home, right? But this is actually considered a custom link. So this can be any link, right? This can be a link to Facebook. This can be a link to your TikTok. This can be a link to your Twitter, right? By just, you know, typing in twitter.com and then this will be like Twitter, right? And essentially it would just be like a Twitter page, right? But here I wanna rearrange this, right? I wanna put the home, the about us, the contact, and then maybe here I'll put a little drop down for Twitter, right? So I'll go ahead and save our menu now. Okay, now let's take a look at our website. All right, cool. So we have our home, the about, we have contact, and then we have that Twitter, which is considered a custom link. So this can go to any you know website. So you can basically create custom links on your menu if you choose to do so. So now that we created the pages and the menu, let's assign this home page right here as our primary home page. And to do that, we have to turn on the theme customizer. So up here, I'll click on customize. 
Now this is the Bloxy theme customizer and there is a lot you can do here. We will come back to the Bloxy theme customizer a little bit later once we actually have our website fully built. What's really cool is you guys can actually change the color scheme right here and give it this really nice slick color scheme. I, I do like this, right? So at the bottom right here, under the core, you're gonna see homepage settings. I'll click on homepage settings. And then for a static page, I wanna change the homepage to our homepage. Then I'll click on publish. All right, now I'm gonna close the theme customizer. All right, cool. So now you guys will see that the homepage is our current homepage. We have our about, our contact, and so on and so forth. So at this point, we are now ready to design the website using the page builder. Okay, cool. So now that we have all the free tools, now let's go ahead now and design the website using the page builder. Now we're gonna be using a free drag and drop page builder called Elementor. It's really simple to use. And after probably like, like 30 minutes of using it, you guys will definitely get the hang of it. All right, so let's go ahead now and go back to the website and design our beautiful e-commerce websites. So let's do it. So up here at the top, I'll first click on edit page. Now, if you're first time using the builder, you actually have to activate it through the back end. I'm not sure why. Here at the top, you'll see Edit with Elementor, and this will enable you to turn on the page builder. So click on Edit with Elementor. Okay, so here is a little notification. We'll just go ahead and close it for now. Okay, now before we actually use the page builder, I want to adjust the structure of this page. So at the bottom left over here, you'll see Settings. Go ahead and click on Settings. And now we have these options, right? But I wanna hide this title. So I'll click on the hide title. And I also wanna change this page layout to full width, right? So let's go ahead and click on Elementor full width. And this will change the entire page to a full width structure where now we can design it. So let's go ahead and talk about Elementor, right? So on the left side, you're gonna see you have these elements. Now these elements here, you guys can drag and drop onto the page, except for these ones right here. These are the pro ones. So I'll just go ahead and collapse that. So here we have the general elements, and these are all free elements that you guys can drag onto the page. You guys can also use the basic, and then here is the row slash container, right? So it works something like this. You would take these elements and drag them onto the page. So over here, I'll first click on plus, and I'll select something like a three column row, right? So now we have three columns, and I can actually adjust these columns right here. So I can change this to something like 33, and the same thing over here, right? Adjust the columns, right? Okay, and then I'll click on these nine squares and here I can drag and drop elements onto the rows. So I'll take this heading elements, I'll drag and drop it. Now for every single element, you're gonna have three different tabs. You have the content tab. The content tab will control the content of the actual elements. So I can change the content to like Daryl Wilson, right? Now the style tab, this will actually adjust things like the alignment, the text color, and also the topography. So you'll see over here how we can move the elements around. And then here we can adjust the color of the elements. And then also we can change the topography. So I do like to use poppins, right? So we'll change this to poppins, right? And then I'll make it bold. You know, I think poppins bold looks really slick, but that's a really ugly red. You know, let's, let's change it back. There we go. Okay, something, yeah. Red is really ugly on websites. I don't know why. Okay, and then we have the advanced tab. Now the advanced tab will control the position of the actual elements. This can also be used for the page structure and we'll do that a little bit later. But for example, if you guys wanna add in like space to the top, here I'll click on unlink the values and then I can add in space to the top, right? And then also like space to the bottom. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just giving like the element a little bit more space to breathe. Now below that, we also have some cool things like motion effects. So right here we have the entrance animation where we can fade it in, right? Fade in down. Uh, see, we got some crazy ones over here. Zoom in left. Oh, that's really ugly. Ugh. Bounce in right. Okay, that's too much. Yeah. You know, a lot of these guys don't get crazy with this. Okay, to be real, a lot of these are butt ugly and you probably won't ever use these. So uh, use these very sparingly. You know, on my kits or on my website, I actually use fade in down often. So I think I use this one right here. And that's probably like the only one I ever use, right? Okay, so that is the three columns summed up. Every element has this. So when you guys are using elements, just consider to style them by using these three different tabs. Okay, so the next is the image. So over here, I'll take an image and I'll drag it. And you're gonna see that right where that pink line spawns, that's where you guys can actually drop it. And then that's where that will display, right? And then right here, we can choose an image to upload. 
Now, I actually have demo images for all of you guys. There is a link in the description of this video and it'll give you guys access to our images for this e-commerce tutorial. We actually created all these images for you guys. So you guys can just go ahead and upload these all directly to your WordPress website once you download them onto your computer. You guys might actually need some of these because some of these are for the products and we're gonna create some pretty interesting products. So uh, getting these images will help you guys follow along. All right, but I'm gonna go ahead now and upload those. So over here, upload files, select the files, and I'm gonna go over here to show all files, go to my desktop, and here's the images, and I'm just going to download all these right here, right? And then I'll click on open. And now I'm going to upload all these images. So this might just take like a minute. Okay, so here we go, we got some images. Now I wanna go ahead and put this one of this guy right here with the bike. So I'll just insert this image. And there you go. So we have Daryl Wilson, right? And we can style this a little bit more, but I'm not going to. So over here, let's go ahead and add some more elements. So I'll go ahead and drag in a text editor below that. And then here we can change in the text. You can obviously talk about Daryl Wilson saying, hey, he's the CEO of the company, yada, 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 stuff like that. And then you can always style the text right here by just changing the color right here and then also the fonts, right? So you can change this to Tahoma or something. And lastly, what I wanna do is drag in like a button, right? So here we have this button where we can go ahead and style it, right? So here are the styling options. So this is for the topography on the button. And then also we have the uh, background color, right? So I can change this to something like red or something, you know, so, something like that, right? You guys get the point. Now also for every single element, there are more options where you guys can right click on them. So if I right click on this, you'll see we have a few options. Now here at the top, I can click on duplicate and I can duplicate this. And once I do that, I can take this and drag it onto the next column. Same thing with this one, right? I can duplicate this image and drag it over here, right? Same thing over here, I'll duplicate it, right? And so on and so forth. Now, let's say for example, you guys want to drag in a button, right? But let's just say you guys have already styled this button and you don't really wanna to have to style it all over again. So over here, I'll click on the right click and then here I'll click on copy and then I'll go to this button over here, I'll right click and I'll paste the style. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just copying all of the design aspects and I'm basically transferring it to another element, right? So I don't have to redo everything all over again. Now we can actually duplicate not only elements, but also rows and columns. So for example, I'll go ahead and right click on this and I'll delete it. Now over here, I'll right click on this container and I'll duplicate this container. Now you guys will see, it actually just duplicates that container. And we can do the same thing for this one, right? I can right click on the entire row and duplicate this entire row, right? So now we have this all right here. So as you guys can tell, it's a very multi-purpose builder. I mean, there's so much you guys can do with this. And of course, all you gotta do here is just change the images, right? So I'll just put in something like this right here. And then this can be like uh, the shoes, right? And then this will be like, you know, someone else. Jenny Craig, this could be like my team, right? Like my team and, you know, Jonathan, Jonathan Gauze or something, you know, whatever, right? So this is essentially like how you guys can use this page builder. It's a very fluid builder. It's very simple to use. And all you guys really need to do is just learn by trial and error by just dragging in elements. You know, once you drag in enough elements and you get the hang of it, you guys are like, oh, okay, that's what it does, you know? So whenever that pink line shows up, that's where you guys can drop it, right? And then of course, here we have an icon. We can go ahead and style it with the colors and the a size right here and so on and so forth. So that is a quick little rundown of Elementor, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and close all this right now. You guys can also go back into your history. So let's say for example, oh, I just deleted that row. I didn't wanna do that. Here at the bottom, you'll see history, okay? And this will actually go back into time and it'll redo everything that you guys have done, right? So that's really cool knowing that if you guys did make a really big mistake, which I do all the time, you guys can just, you know, you can just go back into the history and check it out. Also, there is a navigator right here. If you guys find yourself like building a lot right here, like you're, you're stacking buttons on buttons on buttons and you know, things get a little cluttered, you guys can always turn on the navigator and you guys can actually just click on this and this will actually help you with um, you know, navigating everything. So I can take this button and drop it below the image 
and then you'll see it applies right here. So you guys can also use this right here, just in case you guys might come across really tight spots on your website, which does happen, you know, especially with like near your menu and stuff like that and your footer and your header. So the navigator does come uh, very useful when you work on those parts of your websites. But uh, I'm gonna close the navigator for now. All right, see you, see you later, buddy, okay. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to delete all of this, right? So delete container and there you go. So now we're back to square one. Hey guys, I wanna give you guys a quick heads up. Now, when you guys are editing your website, under the left side under container, you guys might only see one option. However, some of you guys might actually see two. This is Elementor's newest feature called the Grid Layout, and this essentially allows you guys to create grids. They are experimenting this with various websites, so you may or may not have it. However, you guys can always activate this feature by going over here to Elementor, Settings, clicking on the Features tab, and this is the grid container. You guys can choose to make this active or not. It's currently in beta at the current time of making this video. And within a few months from now, or maybe like four or five months, they might roll it out as like, you know, permanent. So if you guys do want this feature on your website, you guys can activate it. Essentially, all it does here is it basically makes it so you guys can create grids really easily. For example, over here, you'll see that I can click on grid and then we can make a structure, right? And then from here, I can make it like four columns and maybe like three rows and, you know, make it like two columns and so on and so forth. So as you can see, it does make the process of making columns a little bit easier. Now, when you guys do drag it in, though, it does make the other ones disappear. And then to make them, you know, to make them keep going, you just have to keep dragging elements and then they will reappear according to your structure. So as you guys can see, you guys can keep adding in elements and then they will appear, right? So Elementor does tend to update their builder very, very quickly, and they tend to add in tons and tons of features. So if you guys want access to those features, or if you guys want to view their other features, you guys can go over here to the features and settings tab and activate those features right here. So I just had to make this quick video because they created this as I was making the tutorial. So with that said, let's just go ahead and jump back to the tutorial. So now that we have a little bit of understanding with the builder, let's go ahead now and create this landing page right here. So this is a two column row. We have one column right here, and then we have a second column, but I just didn't really add anything in the second column. You know, I didn't really need to, right? So here we have a Lottie animation, we have a text, a heading text, we have a description text, and then we have two buttons that we stack side by side. So let me show you guys how to build this, all right? Let's get started. The first thing is we're now going to click on the plus and we're gonna add a row. Now here you're gonna see the down column and the right column. We're gonna talk more about the Flexbox options a little bit later. It's kind of hard to explain it on the landing page, but you guys will understand what these mean as we go, okay? So just bear with me for now. We're gonna go ahead and select the direction row. Okay, so here we actually have uh, one large column. Now, what I want to do here is I want to actually take a second container and I want to put it inside of this, okay? Now, earlier you guys saw me duplicate elements. I want to go ahead and duplicate this. So by duplicating this, what's going to happen is you're essentially going to create two columns right here. So we have one column and we have two columns, right? Okay. And what I want to do is I can actually take this and I want to put it a little bit more, right? Like maybe 65%. You know, I want this side to be a little bit more larger than that side, okay? And now I'll start adding in elements, right? So over here, we'll skip the Lottie for now because this is, you know, we'll skip that. We'll just stick to the basics, okay? We'll add in a text, okay? So we'll add in a text editor, okay? Just put in like a little bit of text. We will then throw in a heading text, okay? And then below that, we have some more text and then we have two buttons, right? So let's go ahead and add that in. Text editor. Now, before we throw in those buttons, we're gonna actually put a container in here, okay? So we have this small container, right? And we're gonna add buttons in that container. This will make more sense once we actually manipulate these elements, but for now, let's just drag and drop them, right? So I'll drop that in there, and we're gonna drag one more in there. And you guys will understand why we put them in a column, okay? So let's go ahead now and design this, right? So here, you know, a new legacy of sports. Let's just go ahead and just, you know, copy that text I'm a super lazy guy, right? Okay. Now there is one thing I do want to mention. So I'm going to change this back to paragraph. Now over here under style, you guys might notice that the text is actually kind of spread apart and this is called letter spacing. So over here under the topography option, 
I can add a little bit of letter spacing. And what this does here is that it sort of adds like a little bit of elegance, you know, a little bit of flavor to the actual text, right? Below that, we have the heading text, and this is our primary text. You know, this is the text that grabs everyone's attention, right? And this was ready, set, and go. You know, obviously this can be anything, you know, but I'll just uh, use this for now. Ready, set, and go. And then over here in the style, we can go ahead and adjust this, right? So I'll make this a little bit larger. Ready, set, and go. Let's do like 70, let's do 75 pixels, okay? And then below that, we just have some more demo content, right? So this is just demo text. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Let's just make some more, you know, just to add some filler space. You know, there we go, right? Uh, too much, too much, too much. There we go. I think that's that's better, right? Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay. And now we're left with this next section. So here we have two buttons. But before I actually design this, let's adjust this with the flex box. So the Flexbox is Elementor's newest creation, and this can be very confusing for first time users. So I'll do my best to explain it to you guys, okay? Now here we have the Flexbox. Now the Flexbox controls all the elements inside of this Flexbox, right? And here we have the direction. So right now you'll see that it's vertical, right? But I can actually make this horizontal. And what that's gonna do, it's going to force all the elements to um, you know, correspond to how I want them to basically be uh, aligned, right? So remember earlier how we talked about like the arrows? Now you guys know what it means, right? So here we have horizontal. Now I can actually go ahead and justify this in the center to the ends, space between, space around, or just space evenly, right? Or I can just leave it at the starts. Now I can also align those items as well. And that essentially is just going to align them together, right? And here we have gaps. So you guys can actually say, well, how much gap do you guys want? Well, we can, you know, choose, right? But uh, I think something like 20 is good, right? I think they did a good job. Maybe maybe 25, all right? 25 is cool, all right? So that's how the Flexbox works. It allows you to manipulate the elements inside the Flexbox. There will be more examples of this as we go, guys. So don't worry, we will come back to the Flexbox again in a little bit later, but I think that's a really cool crash course on how to use the Flexbox. So over here, we can go ahead and design these rates just by giving this a quick little color, right? I'll just go ahead and, you know, oh, I'm sorry, that, that's, the, uh, that's the, the text color, my bad. We'll do the background here, just give it a, a faint little red, right? And what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and, you know, copy this, and then I'll paste the style, right? Okay, and then maybe we should probably change the text, right? I mean, it's a little boring, you know, click here, like, you know, shop now, okay? Maybe make this a little bit bigger as well. Under the topography, I'll make this like maybe, I don't know, 20 pixels? I think that's too big, Eek, too big. Maybe 18 is good, guys, right? 18, y'all with me? All right, 18, cool, all right. And I'll just copy and paste that again, because I'm a lazy guy. We're, we're not, we're not gonna go through the options, okay? So there we go, right? So we have the structure ready to go. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna make this full width, very similar to this right here, okay? So let's do that. Let's go over here. So I'll click on these six dots. And over here, you're gonna see minimum height. Now to make it full screen, you guys need to select this as 100 VH. So over here, VH, and then 100. Okay, now you guys will see that this is actually a full width landing page, right? So it's a full screen a landing page. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna take these elements here and I want to now uh, use the flex box to manipulate these. So remember earlier how we used the buttons? Now we're going to actually use a flex box for all these elements, right? So for the direction, you'll see we can reverse this or we can you know, put it vertical. So we're gonna leave it as vertical for now and then we're going to center this. There's also these other options where you guys can do like space in between and you guys will see how it spaces in between, space around, space evenly, but I think center is just fine. And then also we can go ahead and use the gaps right here. So if you guys do wanna add in more gaps on these elements, you guys can do that. And as you guys can tell, it's just really simple. You know, it's really, you know, grab and go really simple. So now we have the structure for our websites. All right, and really quickly, I just wanna change the width of this to like 65 and make it a little bit longer. There you go. I, I want it to actually stretch across a little bit more, you know? Because uh, over here, if I close this, you guys will see that's how what it currently looks like right now, okay? But let's go ahead now and add in a background image to this. So to do that, here, click on these six dots here. 
Now, these little six dots and this pink line right here, this is going to control the entire background, right? So this is where we can add in a color or an image or something like that. Over here, I'll click on style. And what I wanna do is over here under background type, we have four different options, right? We have classic. This is just like a basic, you know, a basic classic color, right? You can just add that to your, you know, your background if you wanna go that route. You can also do something like a gradient. If you guys want a two color background, you guys can add that as well. Next, we have a video. If you guys do wanna add like a YouTube video as your background, you guys can insert that link right here and then the video will play in the background. And then we have a slideshow, which is essentially like a slider where you can add multiple images and they will slide in the backgrounds. That's actually pretty cool for portfolio websites. So that's just something to consider. But let's just go back over here to the uh, classic. And here you'll see we can also upload an image. So I don't wanna use a color. So we're not going to use a color, I'll clear that. And I wanna use an image. So right here, image. And I wanna use this dude right here playing basketball. So I'll click on this image and then I'll click on select. All right, cool. So here's the image and what's also really cool, I'm gonna close this little spammy notice. Here we have options for the image. So for every single image, you guys can further design it, right? So over here, we can change the position, right? So just in case you guys wanna, you know, oh, wrong one. Just in case you guys want like uh, the builder to focus on a specific part, you guys can also use custom and say, you know, I want them to, to focus over here, you know, something like that, right? You get what I'm saying? But uh, for now, I'll leave it as default. Here's the attachments. This essentially adds in like a parallax effect. So as the user scrolls, the image never moves, okay? So that is what the fixed option is, okay? And here we have repeats. So if you guys do have like certain images and it's not large enough, it will repeat the image and you guys can choose to repeat it or not. Um, I never use repeat, it's ugly, it's terrible, right? So I'm not gonna use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine to no repeats. And then for the display size, this is actually very important. So the best option is cover. So what cover does is cover will actually take the image and spread it evenly over the background. So it'll actually take the image as it is and it'll display in the background. I use cover quite often. We're gonna use it more in this video. But uh, for this specific image, I actually wanna display a custom size. So for display size, I'm gonna put custom and I want to select 120, okay? Then I'll go ahead and close this just to get an idea. All right, so now you'll see we have the text. We have the basketball right here, and it's just waiting for us to add in a little bit more flavor. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in called a background overlay. So over here, I'll go ahead and open this back up, and we're gonna add in a background overlay. So right here, you'll see background overlay. Now there's two ways to use overlays. You guys can choose to use an overlay on the entire page, or you guys can use a gradient overlay. For example, over here under classic, you'll see that we can add in like this overlay, right? So it's essentially like a color on top of the backgrounds. And this is very helpful if you guys do have a specific color scheme or a brand you wanna carry on the websites. So this essentially will basically apply on the entire backgrounds. You guys can also choose to increase the opacity, right? Or make it darker or make it lighter, right? So back and forth. And there's also CSS filters where you guys can get super crazy, like you can blur it, you can use brightness and all these other options, but uh, we'll come back to CSS filters later on an image, right? It's not really useful for background overlays. So over here under the color, I wanna actually use a gradient. So over here, I'll click on gradients. And here's the trick. So over here, I'm actually using a gradient. I'm using a clear gradient and then also a dark gradient. So that might sound a little confusing and this is sort of a really cool trick you guys can do, but let me go and show you guys. Over here, let's go to our website. And for the first color, we're gonna put nothing. All right, nothing, okay? For the second color, now we're gonna enter in a custom color code. So this is gonna be number sign 272324, okay? So that is the color that we're gonna use. You guys probably can't see it well right now, but not to worry, we're gonna make it look good. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change these locations. So what a location does is essentially it moves around the actual gradient, right? You'll see here how you can actually change the location. Now what I'm gonna do here is change mine to 39, okay? And then over here, same thing. We're gonna do, I'm sorry, not same thing, 34, okay? We're gonna make sure this is linear, okay? 
Now for the angle, this is where the magic happens. So for the angle, I wanna go ahead and change this. So you'll see here, we can actually now change the angle of this, right? Really, really cool. So we're gonna change this to something like 256, right? So I'll type it in, 256, okay. And then here we have the opacity, and this is where we can control the opacity. Now, if you guys do make it really dark, you need to make sure that the text is legible. So all you gotta really do is just change it to white and you'll be good. So I'm gonna change mine to 0.09. I'm sorry, point, point 0.9, there we go, point 0.9. Okay, there we go, cool. So that is how I achieved this specific section. Now that we added that background overlay, all we gotta do now is just change this text color, right? Change this to white, right? Change this to white. Simple, easy, and then also change this to white right here. All right, cool, awesome, how about that? So there you go, so our website is now coming along and it's getting very close to what we have right here. All I really did here was just use different text and I added maybe uh, different colors and stuff like that, but all in all, it's getting very close. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is the button border. On this button right here, you guys might have noticed that there is a small white border. Let me show you guys quickly how to do that. So let's go ahead and open this back up. Over here, I'll click on an element. And for the button right here under style, here we have the border type. I'm gonna put a solid border right here and put one width. I'm sorry, two, two pixels. Let's do two. I think two is good, right? Yeah. Well, let's just do one. I think one is good. We'll do one pixel. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So now you'll see that there is a small border right here. So you can see the actual border, right? The border is uh, white, I think it's white, right? It looks like white, here we go, change it to white, okay? And then we can do the same thing for this other one over here. So I'll just go ahead and copy this, and then we'll go ahead and paste that style right there, okay? So that's essentially how I added that different color border on those buttons, just to give it a little bit more flavor so it's not so like, you know, so it's not so dull and boring, right? So now that we added those in, now let's talk about the next thing, which is called the Lottie animation. So up here at the top, I'll type in Lottie. And here is the Lottie animation. Now this is why we installed that other plugin and this gives us access to use premium elements like the Lottie animation. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it right on the top right there, okay? Now notice that nothing pops up and that's because we need to go to a website and get a Lottie animation. Okay, so this is LottieFiles.com and this website you guys can actually get uh, free Lotties for your website. So over here, I'll type in something like web design, right? And what they're gonna do is they're going to create a bunch of different animations that you guys can apply on your websites. Now, a lot of these are free, right? So you'll see that there are tons of them that you guys can use. Uh, some of these are pro, but a majority of these are free. So like this one's free, this one's free, and all you gotta do is just take something that represents your website or brand, right? So for example, if you're like in the pet industry, I'll put in dog, right? Maybe doggy, you know, see what comes up here. Maybe like a dog like smiling or something, or I mean, that's really cute, right? I mean, this is like, you guys can use all this stuff, right? Now uh, I typed in basketball, but the weird thing is, is that I think they actually took the one that I used off the website, but they still gave me access to it in my accounts. I don't know why guys, you know? So once you guys actually go ahead and you download something, like for example, uh, I'll click on this dog right here. You click on download. It'll then allow you to edit this in your account, right? So I'll save this to Workspace. Once you guys make an account and you download something, okay, so once you guys download it, it'll then bring you to the Workstation. And here you guys can actually control the animations a little bit more. You guys can choose to uh, make this slower or faster, right? Let's go ahead and play it. You'll see it's uh, pretty quick, right? You can slow that down to 0.5, right? See how that looks, yeah, something like that. And then there's a bunch of other styling options where you guys can uh, maybe add like a background or uh, something else, right? Now, I'm not gonna go too far into this, guys, because this is like a whole nother topic, right? But what I'm gonna do here is show you guys how to download these. So let's go over here to my workstation. I think it's up here, right? There we go. And I wanna download this basketball. So I have this basketball here. Here, I'll click on Lottie Jason. Here, I'll click on download. And now I'm gonna download this JSON file. Now we're gonna upload this to our website and this is going to display on our page. So let's go back over here, okay? And right here under file source, I'm gonna change this to media file, right? 
and then we're going to upload that file. Right away, it's going to say enable unfiltered file uploads. Make sure that you guys do enable this, and this will basically allow your website to upload JSON files, okay? So right here, select files, and I'll select that file. This is a really cool browser, you know, I use this new browser called Opera. It's actually really good. You know, it's very quick and I like the colors and it's really flashy, I love it. So here is the file, and then I'll click on select. Okay, so if it does not display, there is one thing we have to do, and that is updating the SSL. For some reason, when you guys upload Lottie animations, there is some sort of discrepancy with the SSL up here. So I'll show you guys quickly how to fix that. So over here, I'm gonna exit the builder. Now this is only necessary if you guys do wanna add Lottie animations, and this is one thing that I ran into. So over here under plugins, we're gonna type in SSL. SSL will basically force the SSL on your website and make sure that it's a secured website. Sometimes when you guys upload JSON files, the Elementor page builder doesn't recognize it as secured, so there might be some issues building. Okay, so this plugin will actually force the SSL on your website. So right here, I'll click on activate SSL. Then I'll go ahead and click on activate the SSL. Okay. And that's it, you know, it's a weird thing, you know, but sometimes with WordPress where things happen, I'm gonna go ahead and enable, skip, and I'm going to skip this as well, and also click on finish. So essentially right now, the SSL is activated on the websites. Now there's one thing also we need to do to make sure our website is fully secured, is to go ahead and update the permalinks. So over here under Elementor, under tools, over here under the replace URL. So to make sure the website is fully secured, we're also gonna update the URL address. So we're gonna change this to HTTP tutorial domain. And all we're gonna do for the next one is we're gonna add in the S, okay? So HTTPS, and then right here, I'll click on replace URL. Here I'll click on okay. And that will fix all the issues that you guys might have with adding a lot of animations to your websites. So over here, I'll click on visit sites. You guys are gonna see the Lottie animation already pops up right there. So now let's go ahead and turn on the builder. So guys, sorry about that. I don't really know why that happens, but sometimes you guys upload JSON files to your website, things get a little weird. Okay, so now that we added that in, now we can actually design this a little bit, right? So you guys saw that I moved this to the left and to the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this at like 100, 180 right there, right? And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So we can actually reverse it, but you know, Reversing it is the same thing, right? So uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. And once we're done with that, I'll click on updates. And let's just go ahead and view the website one more time. And there you go. So now we have the animation, we have some text, and everything is actually coming together. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add the finishing touches. So we're just going to basically make sure that uh, this section up here is more structured. And I'll also introduce you guys to global fonts and colors and give you guys a shortcuts on how to further design the rest of the websites, okay? So let's go back to our websites and let's turn on the builder. Okay, now the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna edit this hero image, right? I wanna change like the width and stuff like that. So up here under the six dots, we're gonna go ahead and adjust this. So over here for width, I wanna change this to 1280. Next, over here under gaps, I wanna change this to 64, right? So I wanna just make this a little bit more, uh, just change up the structure just a little bit, right? Over here under the advanced section, I also wanna add in some margin and padding. So for the margin up here, you guys are gonna see that margin is essentially space, right? It's basically saying, where's this element gonna start from? Well. I wanna actually create negative margin. Now this might be a little advanced, so just bear with me, okay? So I wanna add a negative margin. So here I'm gonna put in a negative and then 100. You guys are gonna see that it actually moves the page up, right? So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm forcing everything to go up. So I'm gonna add 177 margin, just like that, okay? And then I also wanna add in a little bit more space to the top right here, because you can see the basketball is kind of off the page. So for the padding, I'll change this to 250. And I also wanna add in a little bit more space here on the bottom. You guys can tell that uh, you know it's a little bit more scrunched right here. So I'll go ahead and add in some uh, bottom spacing right here. I'll put in 96. And I think that is pretty good right there. Now lastly, I'll go back over here under the flex box and I don't really wanna justify the content anymore and I'm not gonna make this vertical. So I'm just gonna leave that as is. And we're gonna change this width over here to 60. All right, there we go. 
Okay. Okay. And let me just change the basketball size to like 120. It's actually a little bit too large, right? What do you guys think? There we go. Perfect. Okay. And there you go. So now you guys will see that we have this beautiful landing page and it's very similar to our current landing page. The only difference is, is that maybe we have some small uh, sizes on the button, like this is a little bit different. So let me go ahead and show you guys actually the font and the color that I use and then introduce you guys to global fonts and colors. So making the rest of the website will be really simple. So over here, what I'll do is I'm gonna update this. And now I'm gonna show you guys the global fonts and colors. Now we could have done this in the beginning of the video, but I wanted to sort of show you guys, you know, how to do these on your own without using global fonts and colors. So over here, you're gonna see site settings. Now, whenever you guys decide to use colors or fonts, you guys can actually use pre-made conditions where you can just add in your own colors without having to guess which color it is. So over here under the primary color, I'm gonna change this. This is gonna be, Go ahead and backspace this. Here are the color code I use. And of course you guys can use any color scheme that you guys want. It's 191012. The secondary one I use is gonna be something else. It's gonna be 272324. The text is going to be, go ahead and change this, 403B3C, right? All right. And the ascent color is gonna be that red color that we've been using, right? So C3183F, okay. And we can actually add in more colors if we wanna go that route. But um, for now, let's go ahead and skip that. Now we can also add in global fonts as well. So what I'll do right here is I'll click on the global fonts and then we can also adjust the global fonts for the entire website. So for the primary menu, I'll go ahead and change this to Poppins, right? I want that to be my global you know, font. And then for the weight, we'll do 600. And then for everything else, I think we'll just leave it as is. But I do wanna change the pixels to 24, okay. And also for the text, I do wanna change this as well. We'll also change this to Poppins and we'll make this text 16. Something like that, right? So I think that's a, a lot more appropriate. And then I'll click on update. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just basically setting preset conditions. So when I add in like elements, I can just quickly apply them. Now, one thing I also do wanna show you guys as well. So now that we actually set those global options, I quickly wanna show you guys save as default. And this is gonna be really helpful going forward. So over here under the style, now over here under custom, you guys are gonna see we have all these colors, right? So here are our current colors, right? So we can go ahead now and apply those colors to all of our elements. And over here, I'll also go to the uh, topography and then we can apply this, right? So for the text, you'll now see that it looks just like that. And the same thing over here, we'll go ahead and change that text, okay? And maybe over here we can change like the, you know, the text, so to click here, contact us, contact us now. You know, I don't know, something like that, right? You guys get the point, right? Okay, so now that I style this, maybe I don't wanna to have to do this all the time, right? Because notice here on my website, we also do have other buttons. And instead of actually doing this all the time, we can save this as a default. So over here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna save this as a default. And what this is gonna do is it's going to basically make sure that whenever we drag in an element, it's going to use those specific styling options. So for example, I'll find the button here and I'll just throw it over here. And you guys will see that it is the same exact styling options as the uh, button that we created, right? Really, really cool. So you guys can do this for everything. So we can actually use this right here, also for a default, okay? And we'll also use this one right here as a default. So now when we drag these in, it'll automatically be ready for us and it'll be all ready to go. Pretty cool, right? So congratulations, party people. We have successfully created a beautiful landing page. Pat yourself on the back. You know, you guys did a really good job. The landing page is the most difficult part of the website. So if you guys got this down, the rest of the website will be a complete breeze. So let's go ahead now and click on updates and let's build the very next section. So right here, you'll see that we have these little uh, icons and that's all they are, they're icon boxes, really simple. So over here, I'll go ahead and put in the plus. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to actually use one Flexbox, and then I wanna add in a second one inside of it, okay? All right, so we have this Flexbox, and we can go ahead and duplicate this and duplicate it one more time, 
and one more time. So essentially now we have four boxes inside of this flex box. So now what we can do is we can add an elements inside of these. Now we can use what we call is an icon box. So over here we have this icon box and I'll just take this and I'll drag and drop it. All right, cool. So now we have this cool little uh, icon box right here. And all I really did guys was all I did was just get rid of the description and I just kept it like that pretty much. So over here, we can go ahead and change the icon. So you guys can choose between tons and tons of icons. Now the icons that we used, I actually don't even know where we got them from guys. They're somewhere in here. And when you actually upload the icon, there's no way to know the name of it. So we were just like, dude, like what did we, what did we add? And I didn't know, right? So uh, we'll just do something basic right here. We'll just type in like store, okay? And I'll just use, uh, I'll just use this one for now, right? A window or something, you know, whatever. And over here under the style, this is where we can adjust everything. So the first thing is the icon. Here we can change the icon color, right? And uh, actually we'll probably give it this gray color. Actually, no, black is cool, black is cool, right? And the next one is the content. So I think over here I put something like wide range of products. Wide range of products, okay? Now notice here how there's too much space right here. So we can fix that. Over here under content, if we go to the title section under the topography, we can actually reduce that. So here we have line heights. If you guys actually decide to adjust this, you guys can adjust the line height right there, right? So that makes a little bit more sense. All right, got it? Okay. And then also we would change this over here to Poppins, right? Poppins, maybe Poppins Bold, my favorite. Okay, so since we added Poppins, you, you guys are gonna see that, there we go, all right? So now, now it looks beautiful, now it looks all cute, right? How about that? Now here we can go ahead and right click and duplicate, right? Right click and duplicate. And one more time, right click and duplicate. So with the power of video editing, I'll go ahead and change these three icons. Okay, so I went ahead and I adjusted all of these to, you know, just fit the color scheme and the criteria of the website. So now that we did that, now let's go ahead and adjust the row settings. So next I want to adjust this right here. So what I first wanna do is I wanna make this full width, right? And then for the advanced section, I wanna make sure there's zero padding, okay? And what that does is that basically stretches it all the way across the page right there, as you guys can see. And now we can actually use the flex box and manipulate these elements inside of this uh, flex box right here. Okay, so here is the navigator and you're gonna see this container. And this container is actually controlling all of this right here. Okay, so I'll click on the container right here. And then what we're gonna do is I wanna go ahead now and make sure that we have this selected and I wanna make sure that this is box now. Okay, so it's box, right? And we're just going to make some quick adjustments. I'm gonna make sure this is centered and there we go. And I'm gonna put 24 right here, okay? So essentially what that's doing here is that's just adding, you know, a little bit more space and stuff like that. All right, now the very next thing is I wanna add in some padding, right? So you guys might notice here how it's just too close to the top and bottom. So under the advanced section, we can add in some padding, right? So I'll put in maybe like 30 pixels of padding and I think that looks good all around, right? So 30 pixels and I think that pretty much works, right? You guys are gonna see it looks really nice. I'll go ahead and, and close this. And you guys will see that we have these really nice uh, icons right there and everything looks great. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to show you guys how to add in a border. Now, this is a trick if you guys wanna be a little bit more stylish. You guys are gonna see that we have this little border right here and you guys can actually add a border in between every single column. So let me show you guys how to do that. Over here under the flex box. Now this is more of an advanced strategy. You guys don't have to do this. In fact, me and my developer were, we were like, should we put this on, man? I don't know, you know? So under the style tab under border, here I'm gonna change this to solid and I'm gonna unlink these and I just wanna add one to the right side. That's it. And I can change this color to like black. And what you're gonna see is now there's this border here in between that, which is pretty cool, right? So you guys can do this for all of them. So over here, style, border, solid. And here we go, right side, okay. And one more over here. We'll go ahead and put it over here, border, and then solid, and then one, oh, not negative, there we go, plus one, and there we go. So now we have these really cool like borders in between them. That's just a way on how to separate it if you guys want to just add a little bit more style and decor. 
Okay, now the very next section is, I'm gonna show you guys how to add in shape dividers. Shape dividers are really cool. You'll see right here, we have this really cool shape divider. Don't get too crazy, but shape dividers are a lot of fun. Now, I'm gonna right click on the back right here, and then I'll click on edit container. I can use the navigator, but I just, I just don't want to guys. You know, we can just right click and edit container. Here, I'll click on shape divider, and at the top right here, I'll have that selected, and here we can choose some really cool animations. Look at that. You know, we have tilt. We have, I think, I think clouds is like a, a favorite. You, you see, we got clouds. In case you guys can't see it, I'll change the color, right? So you can see the, the animations there. We got pyramid, triangle, all sorts of really cool stuff right here. And you guys can actually use the controls here to further add stuff, right? Like, you know, width or the height, you know. You guys can do some crazy stuff with shape dividers, guys, trust me. But let's just, you know, let's just keep it basic, okay? Let's just go ahead and do waves pattern, okay? And for the color, I used dash, or I'm sorry, number symbol, E, 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 yeah, E, there we go, okay. I think that's it, right? I think five? Yeah, five, or five, okay. And next, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some height, right? So I think what we're gonna do here is, oh no, we did waves brush, my bad. We did waves brush, there we go, all right, there we go. And we just give it some height, guys, you know, just like our demo over there. So voila, so that is how we can recreate this whole section. It looks really nice and vibrant, and I think the shop is really coming along right here. Now the very next section is we're now gonna create product categories. So we're getting closer to the actual products and the e-commerce aspect of this video. So now we're gonna create a sections for our product categories. So we're gonna create sports, swimwear, and shoes. And we're just gonna add in a lot of animation and some text right here. So let's do that. Over here, I'll go ahead now and click on the plus and click on the down arrow. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this element, right? Because there's no reason for me to like do that all over again. And I'll just drag it down here, okay? We're gonna put that in the centered. But I do wanna add some padding right here. So I'm just going to add in some space, right? So how much space to the top, guys? 50? Maybe 100? 100? 100 is good, yeah? Okay, and then we're gonna throw in a heading text below that, right? Now, sadly, you know, we actually changed that to white, but what I'm gonna do here, guys, is change that back to black, and then I'll set that to my global again. So now I'm going to save this as a default, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put that in the centered, but we'll reduce the size of this. It's a little bit too large, right? Let's go ahead and tone that down to like, you know, 40. There we go. And now we're gonna add in a divider module. Now, essentially, a divider module can add space below your uh, elements, but you guys can also use it for styling, right? For example, here I'll select text, where now you can add in like a text right here, you can add in an icon, but I just like to use it for styles, you know? So over here, I'll just put like 20 and put that in the middle, you know? If you guys do wanna actually add space, here you can add in like a gap, right? So you can use this to add in space, but I don't really use it for space, I just use it for the, the design aspect, right? So that is pretty much this section here. Now we're gonna add in these three sections. And let's go ahead and do that. So over here, plus three columns. Now I'm gonna make sure these are even, right? So over here under the flex box, we're gonna put 33. Over here, 33. And then also over here, 33. So 33 pixels times three, it's about 99. So yeah, they're pretty much almost even. Now what I first wanna do here is I wanna add in a background image to this. Okay, so edit container, style, classic, and then image. And I wanna add in, I think we did a guy right here, right? So we have the guy on a bike, right? Okay. And then for the display size, I'll change that to cover. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna add in an overlay. You guys are gonna see it's too bright. So if I add in text right here, people can't see it, you know? So let's go ahead and add in a overlay, classic. And I'll just use the text, okay? So now it has like that uh, darker color. You know, you guys can also use the other one if you want, you know, the secondary. Actually, secondary might be better. Like, yeah, let's use that. So now we just need to drag in elements. So we have a text, divider, text, and a button. Really simple, guys, right? I know it looks hard, but it's really not. So we have, we'll just do a heading. We'll change this to sports. Okay, and we'll just make that uh, white and a little bit smaller, right? It's too large, change it to 
41. And I'll make this as default now. All right, since we're already working over here, right? Next, we have the divider module. Divider. And I'll just make this like, you know, I don't know. What should we do, guys? 20, 20 is good, all right? But under the style tab, we need to change the color now, right? So I think now white, white looks more appropriate. I'll go ahead and duplicate this. We'll drag that below the divider. And now we have shop sports equipment, okay? Shop sports equipment, okay? And then we have the button below that. Perfect. Now we have to make some small adjustments. Maybe this text is just a little bit too large now. I mean, let's just do maybe like, I don't know, 30 or something or 25, right? And now I wanna add in padding all around this. So over here, under the advanced, I wanna add in padding. Just like a little bit more space, you know, just, just to make it more like perfect. Look at that, beautiful. All right, how about that? So now we can go ahead and just duplicate this. So over here, duplicates and duplicates. Over here, delete and delete and we are all good. Now, the very next thing we have to do is we now need to uh, control this with the flex box. So over here, I'll click on the dots over here. Okay, so now we have these three sections. Now, I probably should have added a flex box, so we added that inside, but we can always use this right here. We can just use the container, right? So over here under the container, I wanna add some gap, right? Some gap, maybe like 20, and also like 20 over here too. Okay, and there you go. So now we have this beautiful section that we just created. And all we have to do here, obviously, is just go ahead and change these to the specific product category. And with the power of video editing, I just created a new section right here. So we have sports, swimwear, and then we also have hiking, right? Pretty cool, right? So now that we added this section in, now we're ready to start adding products. So we need to basically create this section right here. And as you guys can tell, you know, we have these really nice abstract background right here, and we boxed it with this really nice gray elegance background just to give it a little bit more emphasis. So let me show you guys how to do that. We'll go ahead and go over here, and we're gonna add in a new section. Go ahead now and create a new section. Now, what I wanna do next is I wanna actually drag a container in here and plot it in there right there. This is very important, so make sure you guys do add this container in. Okay, and the next thing, I'll drag in a heading text, and we'll change this to like our product categories. Right, and then for the style, I'll change that to black and we'll space that. Okay, next I wanna add in some space. So over here under the container, I'll click on the six dots, go to the advanced, and I'm gonna add some uh, space right here. So we're just gonna add in probably like maybe, maybe 100 pixels, right? Let's add in 100 pixels. Okay. Next, I'll add in a divider module. Here we go. Drag that in there. And we're going to put something like 20, put this in the centered, and then we'll make this, uh, actually we'll leave it as black for now. Okay. All right. Okay, so now that we have like a general understanding of how to use this page builder, now let's create products. So we're gonna install a free plugin called WooCommerce, and this is going to basically turn our normal WordPress website into a e-commerce website where we're basically integrating a shopping cart. So with this, we can create products, we can accept credit card payments, and so on and so forth. So in this part of the video, we'll be installing a free plugin, and then we're gonna start creating a variety of products. You guys ready? Let's go. Next, I'll click on updates. So now let's turn this website into an e-commerce website. And to do that, we need to install a plugin. So let's go back over here to the dashboard. All right, WordPress. Now over here under plugins, let's click on add new. Now we're going to install a very popular plugin called WooCommerce. WooCommerce is a free plugin that allows you to turn your website into an e-commerce website. It has tons of extensions and there's so much you guys can do with this plugin. So this is the plugin right here. It is called WooCommerce. Go ahead and click on install now. Then you'll click on activate. All right, cool. So next it'll prompt you guys with a setup wizard, but let's just skip this. So I'll click on skip guided setup, but we need to at least tell them where we're located. So I'm gonna put United States and I'll put 
Uh, where's Las Vegas at or Nevada? Here we go. Nevada. Where are you at, Nevada? Here we go. Okay. Then I'll click on go to my store. Okay. We're going to skip this for now. Now, really quick over here under settings, let's first click on settings. And there's one thing I want to quickly change. So over here under products, let's click on products. And here we have weight units. Now in America, we use pounds and we also use inches. If you guys are in Europe or in Asia, I realize you guys use uh, kilograms. So you guys will go ahead and change this to the appropriate measurement units. Next, I'll click on save changes. And next, let's go ahead and create some products. So over here, let's click on products. So right now we have no products. So let me explain what kind of products that we're gonna make. So here's the first product that we're gonna create. This is called a simple product. A simple product has no variables, right? All it has is the add to cart feature. And here users can go ahead and select a specific quantity and then they can just add it to the carts. So let me show you guys how to create a simple product. Over here. Let's click on create products. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this just because I don't really care about all that, right? So let's go ahead and create our first product. Now this is gonna be a basketball net. So I'm gonna type in basketball net. Now here we have the product description. Now this description actually displays below the product. So right here, you'll see we have some other description. This is the description like that you might want to talk about where it's made from or the materials or dimensions or something technical about the product. You guys can add it in right here. I'll just throw in some just demo content for now. If we scroll down, we're going to see a few options. Here we have product data, right? So we have simple products, group products, affiliate products and variable products. Now we're just going to select a simple product for now. Here you can see we can select virtual and also downloadable. So a virtual product would be something like a phone call, right? Or a lawyer consultation. And a downloadable product would be a product where users can actually download something and you guys can actually choose the file right here. But we'll come back to that in just a little bit, but it is very self-explanatory, right? Pretty simple. So let's uncheck these. So first, how much does this cost? Well, I'm gonna say this costs $100. Is this on sale? Well, we can put a sale price. So I'll go ahead and put $80. Now, when you want to schedule this sale? Well, I'll put 27th to the end of March, right? So it's like a one month sale, All right? Cool, awesome. Next, we have inventory. If you guys have a SKU number, you guys can enter it in right there. Next, we have stock management. If you guys want to display how many you have in the store, you guys can click on this check and then display it. So for example, I have 50 in stock. It's really up to you if you want to tell your customers how much you have left or not, but it's your store, but I'm just showing you guys how to do this. Sometimes displaying the quantity of the products does create urgency and it can lead to more sales. Do you guys want to allow back orders? If you guys do, you guys can say allow or not allow, or you guys can allow, but notify the customer. I'll just click on do not allow. And that means if I'm sold out, they can no longer purchase the product. Now, when do you want to be notified when you guys are running low on this specific product? Well, I'll say, look, if we have only 10 products left, then I want to be notified. Then they're going to send me an email and notify me saying, hey, you are running low on this stock. You might want to refill. OK, the last one is sold individually. This is a very strange option. So basically saying this product can only be purchased and no other products. So if you have this checked, that means the user can only add this to the cart and no other products. There are some very rare circumstances this would make sense, but for most of us, we will not have that checked. Next, we have shipping. How much does this weigh? Well, it weighs about 10 pounds. Here is the dimensions. I'll put maybe it's 24 inches, 10 and I don't know, 18 or 20. Yeah, there we go, 18, I don't know, whatever. Shipping class, we'll come back to that a little bit later when we talk about the WooCommerce settings. Link products, we have no products right now, so there's nothing to upsell or cross sell, so we'll skip that for now. Attributes, this does not apply to us. This is only for variable products, and this would mean we're gonna add variables, but we'll do this in the next section. Advanced, if you guys want to leave a purchase note for your customer, you can leave them a note saying, thank you so much, dude. Menu order, this will actually display your products in a specific order on your shop page. After we create more products, we'll come back to that and you guys will get a little bit more uh, understanding of what that option is. 
you guys can enable reviews for the products. And here is the product short description. Now this is very important because this is the text that's going to represent the actual product. So this right here is the actual product description. So you need to make sure that you guys do have uh, something really descriptive here for your products. If you guys do need help, always try ChatGPT. So I'm over here on ChatGPT and for example, create me product description for a basketball net for my e-commerce store. And you guys can actually use this description and then just copy and paste this onto the website. All right, so they created some description for me and I'll just go ahead and just use this, right? I don't wanna, I don't wanna use too much, right? I don't wanna fill up the page here because that's, that's a lot, but I'll just go ahead and throw in something right here, right? Really cool, okay. So we have the description, we have the product info. Next, let's talk about the images. So over here under product image, I'm going to select the basketball nets. So here is the basketball nets. I'll go ahead and set this product image. Now, if you guys have more angles or images of this product, you guys can also add these. I'll just go ahead and just, you know, use this one just, just as an example, right? So next we have product categories, and this is actually pretty important. So for product categories, I'm gonna put sports accessories, okay? And then I'll add this category, okay? Here for tags, I'll put basketball, 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 orange, and then nets. Tags can help your users search for products a little bit easier, right? Here we have some options from that plugin, but we're not gonna use that, right? So I think we're all ready to rock and roll, guys. I think that's it, right? Let's go ahead and publish this to the store now. So right here, I'll click on publish. All right, and now let's view the product. And look at that, we have this beautiful product. How about that, a basketball nets? You'll see we have some key features from ChatGPT. We have 50 in stock. We have our categories, such as sport accessories. We have tags. People can add this to the carts. Here we have more images of the actual products. And when users hover over it, it actually zooms in a little bit on the actual product, right? So over here, we can zoom in on it, right? Scrolling down here, we have some description and also people can leave reviews about the product, like amazing product. And there is our review. You guys can restrict this to only certified buyers. And we'll talk more about that in the WooCommerce settings. Now scrolling back over here, if we click on sport accessories, you guys are gonna see this page and this page will actually put all the products within this category onto this page only, right? Pretty cool. So that is how we can create a simple product, right? Now, before we go on any further, let's first now add the shop page to the actual menu because when we installed WooCommerce, it actually created the shop page for us. So let's do that. Let's go back over here to dashboard. Over here under the appearance, now let's click on menus. Over here under pages, I'll click on view all. Now you guys are gonna see more pages. You're gonna see cart, checkout, and then also the shop. So I'll go ahead and add that to the menu. And I'll rearrange this, right? Make it look a little cool. Here we go, the cart and the checkout, right? Also, what's also really cool about creating uh, products and product categories is you can also add these products to the menu. So here we have products. If you guys do wanna add products to the menu, you guys can go ahead and just, you know, click on add to menu, and you guys can now add products to the menu. If you guys wanna delete it, all you gotta do is just remove it. You guys can also create product categories. So over here, we can now add in product categories. And I think most shops actually add product categories to their shop, right? So here we can put in sport accessories, uh, equipment, and other, you know, sports categories to, you know, redirect the user to buy your products, right? But uh, for now, I'll just go ahead and click on save menu. Okay. And we'll take a look at our website one more time. So now you guys will see we have a shop. And if I click on it, you will now see all the products will be displayed on your shop page. How about that? Now, I know this page looks really boring and bland. We will design this page a little bit more once we talk about the theme options. So don't worry about that. We will make this site look amazing, okay? So now that I showed you guys about the shop page and the simple products, now let's create a variable product. Over here, let's click on add new. So what is a variable product? 
So I'm over here on the shop page, and this right here is an example of a variable product. So I'll click on the outdoor lamp. Now this product right here actually has different variables such as size and color. So this is an outdoor lamp, right? And for the size, I'll select medium. And then if I change the actual color, you'll see the product actually changes based off what the user selects, right? Pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and adjust this right here and we'll create a variable product. Another example would be like this watch over here. So I actually created another one, right? This is a variable watch. And this is just like a watch right here, but we actually have different colors, right? We have brown and we also have like, you know, large and stuff like that. So uh, I'll be showing you guys how to create this type of product. And this is gonna be probably a very common product for most of you because many of your products might have variables. So let's do it. So this is gonna be an outdoor lamp. For the product description, I'll just throw in some demo content. Okay. Next right here, you'll see product data. Let's go ahead now and select variable products. Let's go ahead and close these little annoying notices. All right. Next shipping, we've already talked about that. Here we have linked products. So now we can actually add a upsell. So an upsell is a product that you can recommend when someone's actually viewing the product. So I'll go ahead and put in the basketball net. Okay. Also, you guys can always hover over this in case you guys are not, you know, 100% familiar. So, so we're basically just gonna be recommending products when people are currently viewing this specific product, okay? Next, we have attributes. So this is where we're going to add in the attributes, right? So the first one is gonna be size, all right? Next, we're gonna type in small. Now, you need to enter a symbol. So on your keyboard, above the enter sign, you're gonna see a bracket sign. I'll go ahead and put it up here on the screen. You need to hold shift and press that bracket sign. And it'll look just like that. Once you do that, now you're gonna enter in the next value. So I'll put in medium, all right? And the last one will be large, okay? I'll go ahead now and close this. Now I wanna add in another one. Add new, okay? This is gonna be color. We're gonna put yellow, red, and yellow, I'm sorry, orange. Silly me, silly me, okay? So now I wanna make sure under both of these that these boxes are both checked. I want use for all variations. And now I'll click on save attributes, okay? Once we actually save those, when I'll go to variations, then I'll click on generate variations. I'll click on okay. And now WooCommerce is gonna create variations for all of these different attributes. So now we have small yellow, small red, small orange. It looks like I spelled orange wrong. Whoops. Let's see if I can actually change that. Orange, there we go. Okay, so now we have all these different variations. Now we need to actually go ahead and add in a price and an image for all of these. This can be a little time consuming, but I'll walk you guys through how to do it. Over here, I'll click on edits. And for small yellow, I first want to add in an image of the yellow lamp, right? And this is going to be $100, right? You guys can also put in more information about this right here, such as the weight and everything. So you guys might want to do that, right? Makes sense. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to close that and open in the second one. So small red, here we go, 100 bucks. Now I wanna be uh, transparent. If you guys forget the price on one of these variables, the entire product will not show, okay? So you must enter everything for all the variables, all right? Over here, small orange, right, $100. So if you guys do create a variable product and people cannot add it to the cart, I just wanna remind you guys, a very common mistake is that you forgot to enter the price somewhere, right, on one of these variables, okay? Uh, what color was this? This was medium yellow. Okay, medium yellow. This is still gonna be $100, right? We are gonna add a different price for the large one, right? Because I think large products are gonna be a little bit more expensive, right? Over here, 100 bucks. And same thing over here, $100 for the orange one, okay? Now for the large one, we're going to add in this one here, right? large yellow, but this is gonna be $150, okay? It's gonna be a little bit more expensive. Large red, $150. And then also we have large orange over here, and this is also gonna be $150. All right, make sense? All right, 
Now over here, we can add in some product short description. We can always use ChatGPT, you know? So let's go ahead and just make a quick prompt. So create me product description for an outdoor sports lamp. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we have a lot of text. I'll take the key features and we'll use this, right? So I'll copy this and I'll paste that right here. And you know what, up here, I'll actually use this other stuff, right? We, we have product description and we have all this really cool stuff. So I'll add this description and we'll have that right here. Okay, go ahead and paste that in. All right, how about that? Look at that, beautiful, look at that. So now I'll set a product image. So I'll just select red one as default. Product gallery images, we don't really need to select them, right? Because we already have the other ones they can select from. But for the category, I'll put like uh, outdoors. So we'll create a new category for outdoors. Product tags, lamp, orange, red, and yellow. All right. Now there's one last thing I do want to mention. For the default form values, you guys do need to select a default. So for example, what is the first product value that they're gonna see when they click on the product? A medium red, a medium yellow. Well, I'll just put medium red because I want it to match the current product image. And I think we're all ready to rock and roll, guys. Let's go ahead now and click on publish. And now let's view the product. And look at that. We now have a beautiful outdoor lamp. You'll see the price goes from 100 to 150. We have these beautiful key features, a lot of description. And here we can adjust the size, right? So small yellow, right? There we go. Small yellow, small orange, and small red or medium red, right? So you guys are going to see it works together and it all collaborates perfectly. Now, if you guys do want to change this text, we're going to do that a little bit later in the theme options. Also, you guys might be wondering, you know, why is this product so large? I'm actually working on a smaller screen just to make sure that it's legible for you guys. So you guys don't have to watch this from like a 2K uh, frame, you know? So I'm actually, again, working on 1600 by 720. So it is kind of zoomed in. So that is pretty much it for the variable product. You'll see we have our categories, we have our tags, we have our description and everything looks amazing. We also have our upsell right here of you may also like and it recommends the basketball nets. So congratulations, that is how we created a variable product. Now this product is probably the most difficult product to create. So now that you guys know how to make this, you guys are pretty much e-commerce pros. So pat yourself on the back and congratulations. So now that we understand what a variable product is, let's move on to the next product. Now we're gonna create a group product. A group product is a product with multiple products inside of it. For example, here we have this basketball and this basketball might come in different sizes, right? We have 12 inch, 14 inch, and also 16 inch. Another good example of this would be an iPhone, right? An iPhone has multiple sizes such as 256, 512, or one gig, right? So that's an example of where a group product would be useful. So let me show you guys how to create this. This one's actually a little tricky. Now, instead of actually going into the back ends up here under the plus new, we can just go to products. And uh, yeah, that's a little quick shortcut. Okay, so this is gonna be like basketball. Now for product description, I'm just going to go over here to ChatGPT and ask them to create some product description for a basketball. Okay, so I'll go ahead and use these technical details right here. And I'll paste that over here. Okay, now below that we have product data. I'm gonna select group product, okay? Now group products, I'll be honest guys, they're a little weird. The way you make them is a little awkward, so we'll, we'll touch base on it as we go. Product short description, I'll go ahead and put in some key features here, right? Okay, and I'll paste it in right there. Wait, paste it, right? Okay, and over here on the right side, I'll click on add new category, and I'll just put sports. For product image, I'll select a product image, selecting this basketball, and that is pretty much it. So I'll go ahead now and click on publish. All right, now we have this product, right? So over here, I'll click on all products. So here we have this basketball, right? But people can't purchase it. We now need to create products and put it inside of this parent product. So over here, let's click on add new. 
This will be something like a 14 inch basketball. You guys can go ahead and add in product description about this 14 inch basketball, but I'm just going to enter in the demo content for now. Okay. Simple products. I'll go ahead and put something like 50 bucks. Now you guys don't really need to enter the description if you guys don't want to, but it's strictly optional. And I'll go ahead and add in the product image of just the basketball, right? And before we actually publish this, we need to do something. Over here under catalog visibility, I wanna make sure that this is hidden, okay? So make sure that you guys do hide this, okay? So you do not want this to appear on your shop. I'll click on okay, and then I'll click on publish. Okay, now we're gonna create the 16 inch. So over here, add new, 16 inch basketball. And I'll do the very same thing. Just go ahead and paste in some description. And then we'll do the very same thing. I'll just paste in some description, right? This will be $60, right? It's a little bit more expensive. Put some more description, right? And same thing, product image. I'll put the basketball. And then we're also gonna hide this as well. Okay. And then I'll click on publish. Now we're gonna make one more. All right. So now we have like the 20 inch. And I will also throw in some description here, right? This will be $100. You know, it's pretty expensive basketball, right? Okay. And then also we will add in the product image. Okay. We'll also make sure this is hidden. All right. And then lastly, we will publish this product. Okay, cool. Now let's go over here and click on all products. You're gonna see that we have these products right here, but what I want you guys to do is go to the first one, which was the basketball, and then click on edit. We're gonna scroll down, and as we scroll down, you're gonna see linked products. Let's click on linked products. Here you're gonna see group products. I'll go ahead and just type in basketball, or basket. Now you're gonna see 14 inch, 16 inch, and the 20 inch. Just go ahead and add all three of these. All right, and then the last one. Okay. And then also for the upsell, I'll just put in like a net. You know, why not? Okay. All right. So there we go. We added in those group products. The upsells is not required. You don't have to, but it's just, you know, if you just want to recommend the basketball net if they are currently viewing these products. Okay. So now let's click on updates. Now that we've done that, now let's go ahead and view the product. Here we go, we have this basketball, we have our key features, and over here you'll see we have 14 inch, 16, and then also 20. And you just can go ahead and add all these to the cart right here by clicking on add to cart. All right, so that is a group product. I know it might be a little weird and awkward to create, but that's just how it's done, right? Now I added that to the cart, and over here, I'll click on view cart. You guys are gonna see that we actually have this really nice cart right here where we have the products, we have the name of the products. And um, yeah, you just can go ahead now and proceed to checkout. And here is the checkout page. So that is pretty much how you guys can create a group product. And I just wanted to show you guys the cart and checkout just because we haven't checked it out yet. Okay, so now that we created those products, now let me walk you guys through the other various products. These ones are uh, pretty easy to make, right? So the next product we're gonna create is called a virtual product, right? And this is like a coaching session. Here I'll just throw in some demo content. This is gonna be really quick and easy. All you gotta do is just check in the virtual right here and then just add the product, right? Okay, what the virtual option actually does is it basically excludes shipping, okay? So that is one key metric. So if users check this out on your website, they will not be charged shipping because obviously this is a virtual product, right? And I'll just go ahead and put a picture of like a, you know, like a guy or something saying, oh, you know, we'll teach you how to do this, you know? Then I'll click on publish. I'll view the product. And this right here is a coaching session, all right? Pretty simple, right? It's pretty easy, you know? I think you guys understand it, right? Now let's go ahead and do another one. Over here, products. We have two more products left, guys. Just two more, and then we're done. This one is gonna be a downloadable product. So this is gonna be a basketball, no, I'm sorry, a cycling guide. 
Okay. Just throwing some description here. Obviously, just demo. Here, I'll put in virtual and downloadable. So right here, I'll put $100. And right here for downloadable files, all you're gonna do is click on choose a file right here. And then you're just going to choose the file that you want them to download and then insert that URL. And that is it. Once they've done that, uh, they'll go ahead and just you know set the product image here. So I think we're gonna do the bicycle, right? You could put this in a category if you want, right? Like, uh, I don't know, sports or whatever, right? Then I'll click on publish. All right, so here is the cycling guide where users can read about your course or your guide, and then they can add it to the cart and purchase it on your websites. Now, the very last product is a product that I guess you could use. This is called an affiliate product or an external product. So for example, basketball on Amazon. Now, bear with me, you know, this is going to be a little different. So essentially what this product is, is you're going to recommend other products. So over here under product types, you'll click external affiliate product. Now, what this is going to do is that if someone actually clicks on this product, it's going to redirect them to another website. Now, you might want to put in your affiliate link right here. So if you guys are an affiliate for some other company or you want to recommend this product on another sister website, you can go ahead and put that URL right here. So I'll just put darylwilson.com, right? You know, or visit, you know, visit Daryl. Visit darylwilson.com. Here is the price, right? And over here, I'll just throw in some demo content, right? So essentially what this is gonna do, it's just gonna redirect them. But let me make sure I put an HTTPS, okay? And let's just say I am selling a basketball too. I, I don't know, guys, you know, you're gonna, you know, you can put in whatever here, but uh, let me give you guys an example right here. Okay, so let's say for example, like you guys are an Amazon affiliate and you guys want to recommend this product. You guys would just use the site Stripe and just use your affiliate link. And then you guys can just go ahead and go back over here and then just like paste it in, right? So instead of this, I'll just put like visit Amazon or buy on Amazon, right? I think that's more practical. Okay. And you guys might wanna download the images from Amazon and use these images instead of the default one, right? And uh, that is pretty much it. So I'll click on publish. And if I view the product here. Okay, so here is the product right here. It is basketball on Amazon. We have some key features. And if someone were to click on this right here, this will actually redirect them to purchase the basketball on Amazon. So this is an example of an affiliate product. I personally think that the a blog is a much better method to get affiliate commissions versus like this kind of affiliate product store, right? So that is pretty much all of the products summed up. So congrats, you guys know how to make all the products for WooCommerce. Now, really quickly, let's go over here to dashboard and I just wanna to touch base on the product section. So over here under products, let's click on all products. So here's all the products, right? We have the name, the SKU, the stock, the price, and then also the categories. If you guys actually want to get rid of things like the tag or the SKU, right here under the screen options, you guys can actually take this off, right? So I'll get rid of the SKU number and I'll get rid of the tags. I'll click on apply. And now we have just these standard products right here, right? Pretty cool. Also right here, we have categories. So you guys might've seen that we have this uncategorized. What I wanna do right here is make sports default and I wanna delete this uncategorized. I just don't want it, you know? Just don't need it, okay? Next over here, we have tags. So here's a list of product tags. Tags just make things a little bit more easier to find for users on your shop. And then lastly, we have reviews. And if someone leaves a review on specific products, they will be displayed right here. So that is the product summed up. That's how you guys can check out products. Also, if you guys do wanna quickly edit a product right here, you'll click on a quick edit, and then you can basically edit it right here, right from the back end. okay? So now that we have created all of the products and we're you know pretty much all set, now let's add these products onto the homepage. So let's go back over here and edit with Elementor. Okay, so now that we know how to create products, now let's go ahead and finish the rest of the website. So we're going to finish the rest of the website and after the website's fully complete, we'll then focus more on the e-commerce aspect like the shop and the theme customizer. You guys ready? Let's go ahead and go back to the website. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll down here. I'm gonna keep scrolling. Now I want to add these products onto the homepage. So over here, I'm gonna type in Woo, and you're gonna see this Woo products right here. Now this is actually from the plugin that we installed earlier in the video, so that's why we installed it. And I'll just throw it right here. 
All right, here we go. So we actually have a few different skins, right? We have skin one, skin two. All right, so I guess they hover over. It looks, you know, looks kind of different. Here we go. Skin three. All right. Okay. Skin four. All right. The little styling stuff to do, right? But that's pretty cool, you know. Skin four. We have skin five as well. Okay. So I'll stick with skin five for now. And another option that is very important is the actual query. So the query allows you guys to select specific categories. So I'll click on custom query. And let's say for example, I just want to display like only like maybe like the sports and the sport accessories, right? So over here, sports, you'll see everything in the sports category will then be selected. We also have like the sport accessories, right? You know, so we got these two here, right? It's pretty cool. And then also we have uh, outdoors, right? So that's how you guys can use the product categories to your advantage, right? Let's get rid of sports right here. Let's see, let's see what it displays. So we just got these two products, right? Not too bad, right? But uh, why not? We'll add all of them. So now we also have other options like display options where you can either, you know, turn the image off. You can turn the, the title off the category, the price, and so on and so forth, right? And here are just a bunch of other options that you guys can go through just in case you guys just wanna get a little bit more stylish and customizable with your products. More importantly, I wanna to go to the style section and I wanna change this add to cart, right? I wanna make sure that we actually have that red background we've been using. So over here under the background type, under classic, I wanna choose that red again. Now, also one thing I want to mention is you guys should probably use the same image size for all of your images. Over here on my demo website, you guys are going to see it's a really clean format and that's because all these images are the same exact size and users can just like scroll through it in a really nice and clean manner, right? So let me show you guys also now how to add in the background and then also the color. So the first thing I want to do is over here under the six dots, I now want to go to style. And now I wanna add in a background. So over here, classic, image, and you guys can use the image, it's in the folder, but I'll go ahead and use this one right here. So here is the image that I used. It's very faint, right? But it's just gonna add some very small abstract designs in the background, right? Okay, so I uploaded the image. And then right here, we can do like something like cover or contain. You guys can like move this around to, you know, to see what fits best for your websites. I think this actually works pretty good for the contain, right? Looks pretty, you know, pretty nice, pretty cute, pretty stylish, right? So that's how I basically added in those little, uh, you know, those little icons and stuff like that. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a very subtle background only on this flex box. So I don't wanna use this container, I just wanna use the flex box. So I wanna add a background to this flex box. So over here, I'll go to the background, classic, and then right here, we'll add in a very faint color. So we'll use the EE again here. One, two, three, four, five, and there we go. So essentially what I've done here is I've just decided to, you know, add in a very faint color, right? And, you know, once you add in that very faint color, it does give it a little bit more emphasis. I probably should remove the white background for this one right here. And um, yeah, if you guys do need help with that, you guys can go to a website right here called Remove BG. Remove BG. And this is a cool website. And this website will actually remove all of the background images from your products. So over here, I'll just go ahead and uh, choose the file. So for example, this one right here has a white background and all you gotta do is just upload it here. And that's it. So that's how you guys can remove the background right here. And then you can apply this on your e-commerce websites. Now what I'll do right here is I'll quickly go ahead and create three products just like the demo and just show you guys how I did that. And with the power of video editing, I'll go ahead and make three quick products. Okay, so I went ahead and I made three simple products of shoes and I'll apply these to the homepage. And once you guys make the products and you guys can see they're the same dimensions, these are 875 by 875. It doesn't really necessarily matter as long as they're identical. So these three images are the same size with no white backgrounds, right? And up here, I just wanna add in a little bit more padding. I want the gray to be a little bit more higher, right? So what I'll do over here is, I'll just go ahead and add some padding to the top. All right, maybe just like 40 or something, right? 
And then also I want to turn this into a carousel. So I want people to actually like scroll through it, right? There we go. So now you'll see that there's arrows and people can go ahead and like scroll between like the uh, categories right here. So that's how we can recreate this section. I do think it's a very vibrant way to showcase your products. So you'll see over here on our demo website that it looks very identical, right? We have the title, we have the black bar, we have the products. And then over here, we just have some little back abstract designs, right? So that's how you guys can recreate that specific section and showcase your products on your homepage. Okay, now the next section, we're gonna use AI. So here we have this section and we're actually gonna use the Elementor AI for this section. So right here, I'll click on this little magic symbol. Now you guys will need to connect your website to Elementor. It's free, it doesn't cost you guys anything whatsoever. So right here, I'll click on connect and I'm gonna connect my website with Elementor. Okay, so I went ahead and I logged in and I'll click on I approve and then I'll click on get started. All right, now what this is gonna do is we can actually use this to uh, get ideas for different sections of our websites. So I wanna create a call to action section right here. So I'm gonna ask it to create a call to action section with a button in the middle, all right? So let's try it. Create me a call to action section that is full width with a button in the middle. Let's just see what it gives us, guys. I have no idea. Let's just try, let's just test this out. All right, here we go. Okay, now this is actually not bad at all. I think we'll take this one right here. I think this one will work. So let's let's go ahead and uh, click on this one. And you guys are gonna see, you know, this is this is pretty cool. Here, I'll click on use layout here. I think I gotta click on use layout. There we go. Let's see what happens here. Woo, look at that. I mean, this is actually really, really nice actually. And uh, what we're gonna do here is, I just gotta click on this and just change the color scheme to something like uh, a scent and we're good to go. Ooh, that border. Ooh, gotta get rid of that border too. This button, I'll just delete it and voila. I mean, look, look how amazing that is. And then all we gotta do here is just add in like a background image and then we're good to go, right? So over here, style, a classic. And then I'll just put in a background image, All right? This can be anything, right? I'll go ahead and put in that. And look at that. Pretty cool, right? Here I'll add in a quick little background overlay and then we'll probably just change the text to white, right? I think, uh, I think that's good, right? Go ahead and add in a quick little overlay here. And then we'll change this text to white. And done. So that's how we can create a section with AI. The AI with Elementor is actually pretty helpful. If you guys feel like you guys are running into, you know, designer block, you guys can always use the AI and it can actually be really helpful a lot of the times. Now also right here, this might be like an email subscribe and I'm not gonna go through email marketing right now, but all you're really gonna do is go to your email provider. And for example, right here, I'm using MailChimp. And for MailChimp, what I can do is get the uh, link to my form or to my email audience and I can just paste it in there, right? So you guys can use a bunch of different email providers. You guys can use MailChimp, Constant Contact, a Weber, or um, yeah, there's tons of them out there, guys. So I'm not gonna go through email marketing in this video because that's a whole nother topic, but you guys can paste the link to your subscriber uh, setup right here, okay? So that is how we can create this section right here. Now the next sections are actually really easy. All we're gonna do is just basically add in a section and it's gonna propagate for us. Only like one element guys, right? Here we go. Make this black, right? Put in the center, give it some uh, padding here at the top. All right. Okay. Throw in a divider. All right, centered, I'm gonna put like 20, right? Change it to black. And this will be something like countdown, right? Or on flash sale. All right, now we're gonna add in a countdown widget, right? Countdown, right? So here is the element that I'm using, right? It is the countdown and I'll just throw it in right here. And then there you go. Now you guys can go ahead and change the due date right here. And then you guys can also restrict like, you know, if you don't want it to display hours or seconds, so I'll get rid of seconds. 
And then here you guys can design it. I'm not gonna go through it, because obviously, you know, that's gonna take a while. So you guys can style this on your own free time. And then over here, I'll just grab in the Woo products again. And done, that's it. There you go. So that's pretty much how we created that other section. All I gotta do here is just change the colors and stuff like that. So over here, I'll change this to a carousel. And for the style, I'll change the add to cart to the color we've been using, right? So, whoops, we've been using that red color, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. White text, there we go, my, my bad, there we go. Background type, there it is, okay, cool. All right, there we go. So that's how we create that section over there. So same thing, right, on flash sale, the time, and then we have these products right here. The next is the blog. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to do that. So let's go ahead and add in the title, right? So next, I'll put in a little uh, title here. And this will be like, welcome, welcome to our blog. And we'll change this to black, right? And we'll save this as default, actually. I don't know why I keep doing that. My, my bad, guys. Here, we'll save that to default, okay? Put that in the center. And we'll also give this some padding, right? Because this is a little too close to each other, right? So padding, we'll do 100 pixels at the top. All right. And uh, we can go ahead and add in a divider as well. Just like before. I think this scheme is actually kind of cool. We're carrying this throughout the website, right? We'll go ahead and put it like that. And now we need to actually create a blog post. So let's do that. Let's go ahead now and create a blog post. So I'll click on update. And now let's go ahead and go to the back. Now creating a blog post and creating a page is the same exact process, except over here, you'll click on posts. So right here, I'll click on all posts. Now this is a default post, so I'm gonna delete this right here. And up here at the top, I'll click on add new post. So this is gonna be your blog post. So this is the 10 best sports products to buy. Okay, so once you guys actually have your blog post title, you'll then go ahead and just add in the content right here. Now, this is actually using a builder called Gutenberg. And if you guys wanna add in elements, you'll click on the plus, and this is where you guys can add in elements. So you can add in paragraph, you can add in images, you can add in all sorts of cool stuff like video and stuff like that. So you can type right here. And then if you guys do want a quick shortcut, you'll type in dash, you know, maybe image. And then this is where you can like upload images. So essentially what you wanna do here is you probably wanna talk about your own products, right? Go ahead and shrink that down, right? Okay, but I do recommend using ChatGPT. So over here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create an article right here. So create me an article on the top 10 best sports products to buy. Make sure to include basketballs and basketball nets. All right, so here is my content. Now, I definitely do not recommend to copy and paste stuff from ChatGPT. I actually have another video. In fact, I have three videos on how to create content to get traffic to your website. I'll leave those in the description, but for now, let's just go ahead and just paste this in here. So I'll just go ahead and paste it in, right? I'll get rid of this. And obviously you guys should probably put like images for each, you know, for each product. So right here, image. So this one's talking about a basketball, right? So I'll just put in like a quick little image of a basketball, right? And then over here, I'll go ahead and press enter. And then I wanna enter in like a button, right? Button. And this will be like, you know, buy now or buy, buy now, right? And what I can do here is I can actually link them to my specific products. So for example, here we have this product on my other website and I'll just copy this. And all you gotta do right here is just paste the link, right? So on the right side, you're gonna see this little fill, right? And we're just gonna change the background color, right? Right. So this is just a quick little example, guys. So you can use ChatGPT to create content. This will get picked up by the search engine and then you can go ahead and recommend your own products and then have links to your own products on your own store right? That is a quick rundown of how to create blogs and then how to uh, incorporate AI into those blogs. One thing to consider is over here under featured image, you guys should probably add a featured image here. So I'll just put in something like this. And then for the categories, we'll go ahead and put like sports, right? Sports. Okay. And once you guys are done, we'll then click on publish. Now let's click on view post. 
All right, here we go, 10 products to buy. We have the author, we have the content, and then right here we have the basketball and buy now. If I click on this, it'll then take me to purchase this basketball. So this is a great way on how to get more traffic. I personally blog on my website, guys, and I get around you know, 50 to 100,000 visitors every single month. So creating content like this is crucial to get traffic to your websites. Now, if you guys plan to market your e-commerce website, I highly recommend to use AI. You guys can actually generate tons of blog articles using AI. And we actually have two videos that show you how to use specific prompts to create really rich content for your e-commerce websites. So for example, you guys can make something like top 10 best this, top five best that, right? And just recommend all your own products only. You know, that's all you gotta do. In fact, most companies today do that, believe it or not. So if you guys do wanna learn AI or you want to, you know, get your hands in it, mess with it a little bit, I have two videos over here that'll teach you guys how to use AI to bring traffic to your e-commerce websites. And we actually do have articles ranking on the first page of Google. And this was all created using AI content. So if you guys are interested in that, we'll go ahead and leave those tutorials in the description below of this video. So now that we created the blog post, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add it right here below this. So let's go ahead now and turn back on the page builder. Okay, and over here, I'll just type in blog, right? So here is the blog right here, and I'm gonna take this and just drag and drop it. So now all of the blog posts that I create will be displayed right here. And I'll go ahead and change this to three columns. And obviously there's a lot of styling options, but you know, on your own free time, you guys can go ahead and check that out. I just wanna change the color right here. So the title for the color, I'll make that red and voila. So that's how you guys can incorporate a blog onto your website. Now, also one thing I wanna mention is since you guys created a blog post, you guys also need to create a page for your blog to display on. So let's quickly do that. Over here, I'll click on the WordPress icon and up here, I'll click on plus new and page. And this will be the primary blog page, right? So this is the blog page, okay? Once I create this page, I also need to add it to the menu, right? Can't, can't forget that, you know? So over here, appearance and menus. And I wanna add the blog page now to the menu. Okay, here we go. I'll put it right there. Okay. Once we do that, we now need to assign the blog page as our blog page. This can be done in the theme customizer. So up here, I'll click on customize. And remember earlier how we went to the home page option? We'll go over here to home page settings, but this time I want to change the post page to our blog page. And then I'll click on publish. I'll go ahead and close this browser. And here we go. So we have our blog right here and our blog post will be displayed right here in a really nice clean format. So that's how we can incorporate a blog onto the websites. So now let's go ahead and turn back on the page builder and let's finish the rest of the website. We're actually almost done. Now the very last section is this section right here. Essentially what I've done is I just added in some images and I added two shape dividers. So that's how we achieve this look. So let me show you guys how I did that. Over here, go ahead and put the plus. Now I'm gonna throw in a container here. Actually, no container, we don't need a container. We'll just throw in an image. Okay, next we'll throw in some images, right? So image, right? Okay, so I'll just use this icon for now, right? This little logo right here. So I'll just use this and I'm gonna duplicate this. So I'll go ahead and duplicate it and duplicate it. And we'll do that maybe just like a few more times, right? Okay, so you guys get the point, right? We have a bunch of like partner icons. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and edit this container. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make this full width, right? And then I wanna add in some padding, right? So up here, I'll throw in some padding. All right, I'll just put in like 30 or something like that, or I don't know, whatever you guys wanna do, 40, 50, you guys will see that we can just add in padding there, right? Okay, so now that we have our space, now let's add in the backgrounds. Now this background is gonna be a little bit more tricky. So over here under the background, I first wanna add a classic color. So over here, we now have this classic color. I now wanna add a shape divider that is white. So over here, I'll go to waves brush, and then you're gonna change this to something like white, right? So now you're gonna see that it has this. And I wanna make sure that these are both 100, right? 100 and 100. And then we'll do the same thing for the bottom. Okay, then we're gonna change this to white. Okay, make sure that's white. 
And then we'll also change this to 100 to 100 as well, right? Okay. Now we, don't, we might need to make this a little bit larger here. So this box needs to be a little bit larger. So over here under layouts, we can actually use the flex box if we want. So what we can do is we can make the minimum height longer, right? All right. And then we can put the elements like in the middle of the center, something like that, right? That looks a lot cleaner. So that's how we can use the flex box and also add in those shape dividers to create these really interesting sections. So that is pretty much it guys for the homepage. Congratulations. This right here is the actual theme. So we're not going to actually use this. This is gonna be a little bit later, but essentially we have created a full landing page and a homepage for e-commerce websites. So congratulations, pat yourself on the back. Go ahead and take a quick little break. If you guys don't need a break, let's go ahead and keep going and let's create the very next section, which is gonna be the about us page. Okay, now before going any further guys, I just wanna go ahead and change this to my logo. You know, it'll make the website look a lot more structured. Trust me, you guys are gonna see. Just that little little part will make the website like turn to like a night and day difference. Now I'm not gonna go too far into this, but over here under the header, under the logo section, I now want to just upload my logo right here. So I'm just going to upload my logo, right? And I'll go ahead and upload it here and I'll select it. And I also wanna make sure that I actually hide the uh, site title right here. So site title, I'm gonna uncheck that. I'll publish this. I'll close the theme customizer and look at that guys. It is getting warmer and warmer to a really nice looking e-commerce website. Now, if you guys don't have a logo, let me show you guys where you can get one. There is a link in the description. You guys can also go to joewilson.com slash Fiverr. And you guys can use this website if you guys need help with logos. Okay, so let me go ahead and close all these really annoying pop-ups. Over here, we'll just type in logo. I do recommend getting it from this website because you guys can actually legally copyright this stuff and use it on your website. If you guys go to like a free logo maker, you guys legally have no rights to that and there's no use for it, right? It's, it's not like, it's not real. It's just like BS, you know? So here you guys can get logos for as little as $5. If you guys do wanna search on a budget, over here we can just do like a custom budget of, uh, I don't know, $10. I mean, that's really cheap, guys. I mean, well, so did, I mean, Nike, I think only paid like a few hundred dollars for theirs too. But uh, yeah, so you'll see these guys will all make logos for you guys. And all you gotta do is just go ahead and uh, pick one, fill it out, and then get a logo from them. And then once you guys do that, you guys can go ahead and download it and then slap it onto your website and you'll be all good to go. Okay, so this part of the video, we're gonna be completing the rest of the website and we'll also be using pre-made templates. Now on this demo website right here, we've actually created all these pages for you guys and you guys can actually just import these on your websites. So for example, over here, we have the About Us page. And what you guys can do is use our template and just throw this onto your About Us page. We've also created the facts and also the Contact Us page as well. So let me show you guys how you guys can export and import Elementor templates. So to do that, let's first go over here to the About Us page. Now we actually have included the homepage for you guys, just in case you guys want to use our exact copy, right? So here's the about us page and I'll go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change these page settings really quick. So over here, hide the title and also change this to Elementor full width. Now you guys won't have to do this all the time, right? A lot of these options will be available in the theme customizer and we're gonna be talking about that in the very next section. Now right here, you'll see that there is this little folder, right? So right here, I'll click on add templates and under my templates, uh, here we have some templates. These I was messing around with earlier, but up here you'll see that we have this little arrow, right? And here I can select the file. Now we've actually created the page for you guys. So right here you'll see website templates and this will be in a zip file. Once you guys open that, you'll see that we have the about us page, the contact, the custom carts, the custom woo dash, the facts page, and also the home page that we have created. So here's the about us page, and I'll go ahead and just open this. And we're going to insert this onto the website. All right, cool. Okay, so there is the about us page. So right here, I'll click on insert and apply. And just like that, the 
demo has imported perfectly on the website. You guys might have to make some minor touches, like right here, you might need to change the text. But overall, you guys can see we have just basically imported the About Us page really easily, right? This took literally like 10 seconds, right? All you gotta do is just make some minor modifications to this. Like for example, up here, I think we have a little bit too much space here at the top. So for the minimum heights, I'm not really sure why it's so tall like that. So maybe I'll fix that. I'll, I'll fix that before I send it to you guys, you know? Here we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and just adjust that a little bit. All right, you guys get the point, right? You guys can fully adjust this. So we'll go ahead and click on updates. Okay, now let's just say, for example, you guys want to take this page and maybe import it on another domain or on another website. You guys can do that with Elementor. So right here under the save options, I'll just save this as a template. And this will be like the remodified about us page, right? Remodified about us. Is that how it's spelled remodified? Did I spell that right? Remod if, okay, whatever. All right, let's, let's just save it, okay? You guys, you guys get the point, right? So here is the remodified about us. And all you gotta do is click on these three dots and then just export it. And then this will download onto your computer. And all you gotta do is just take this and slap it onto a page with Elementor and you can transfer all your work from various pages. Pretty amazing, right? Pretty cool stuff. So that is the about us page. So congratulations, you guys have an about us page. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go to the contact page now. So I'll go ahead and close the builder here or I'll just go to view page and then we'll go to the contact page. All right, same thing, edit page. And then I'll edit with Elementor. Okay, settings, hide the title and I'll change this to Elementor full width. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and open the folder. And then under my templates, I'll go ahead and import a template here. I'm gonna select the contact us, right? Open this. And just like that, we have a beautiful contact us page. How about that, right? We have a contact, we have the, the map. I mean, everything's looking amazing, right? Now there's one thing that we have to do. We have to embed a contact form. Now in the free version of Elementor, there is no access to their contact form. In the pro version, they do have one, but you guys don't need to buy it. You guys can just use a free plugin. So we're gonna use WP Forms. So now let's install a plugin to embed a contact form. This way people can send you emails that will go directly into your email inbox. Okay, over here, plugins, add new. Now guys, there are tons of contact form plugins. All you gotta do is just type in contact form. I mean, there's so many to choose from. This is a very popular free one. WP Forms is also a very popular free one. Forminator as well, this is a free one. Ninja Forms, I mean, these are all really good ones. And you know, the only way to really discover which one you like the best is just to just, you know, trial and error guys, just try one, see if it works. And if it works for you, then just, you know, just, just go with it. But we're gonna use WP Forms for this one. So under WP Forms, we're gonna go ahead and install this one. So I'll click on install now, and then I'll click on activate. Okay, I like this form because they actually have integrations for Elementor. Now right here, you'll see WP Forms. So I'll click on this form right here, and we're gonna create our first form. All right, I'll click on let's go. Now I actually have a tutorial on this specific plugin. That tutorial is about an hour long and we make various types of different forms. But just for tutorial's sake, we're just going to stick to the very bare basics here and just use a simple contact form. I'll go ahead and use this template. Now this is the contact form and you guys can actually just drag and drop things on here on the form, right? Like if you want your customers to enter their phone number, you can just type in phone numbers, right? And then you can just like make this required. So you have to give me your phone number and stuff like that. So you guys can actually use the fields right here and just drag and drop this. There is a pro version where you guys can add passwords, you can add uh, e-signatures, all sorts of really crazy stuff with this plugin. But um, you guys don't need to do that, right? Just to get started, we don't need to do that. So at the top right, I'll click on save. Now there is one thing I do wanna mention. So over here in our settings, here you're gonna see send to email address. Now, whatever it is that your WordPress email is signed up with, it's going to send the contact forms to that specific email. If you guys want to change it, all you got to do is type in that specific email address right here. Okay, so if it's like, uh, you know, your mom at AOL.com or, you know, John at roofing.com, whatever, you'll just go ahead and type that in. But I'm going to leave mine to admin email by default. Okay, and then I'll click on save changes. 
Now there's two things I wanna mention. I do have a video showing you guys how to use this plugin, and I also have a video about if your emails do not end up in your email inbox. That's typically due to a server issue and the email provider, so it really has nothing to do with the form itself, right? But I'll go ahead and just, you know, let, let's just go back to the contact form here. Let's, let's, let's stay on focus, here we go. Contact form, edit with Elementor, and we'll scroll down. And the cool thing is this actually has an integration with Elementor. So if we type in WP, you'll see WP Forms, and I'll just drop that in there. You'll then go ahead and select the contact form, and voila, you'll see that this thing pops up right here. Now you guys can also style this, right? So this actually will fit with your specific color scheme. So over here we have the button styles, and I'll just change this to our, you know, our, our color, right? Now you guys can modify the size and everything else and the positions of stuff, but um, that's actually for a whole nother video. But if you guys do wanna check that out, I have a WP Forms tutorial and I will leave that in the description below of this video. So right here, you guys can choose display options. Like you can choose the form name and the form description. And they have some other just basic styling options for this specific contact form, okay? Just wanna give you guys a heads up. Now, the contact forms with WordPress have always been an issue, right? And the reality is it's not WordPress, it's not the plugin's fault, it's actually the providers. So a lot of these providers, they mark WordPress as spam by default. So a lot of the time emails get blocked from WordPress. So I actually have a video on WP Forms. This will actually show you guys how to create a beautiful contact form. And we also have another tutorial on how to integrate a SMTP plugin to force the emails to go to your customers. So that video is right here. It doesn't cost you guys anything. Since you guys have already bought the hosting I recommended, we actually show you guys how to use the um, routing in that specific server. It takes about 10 minutes. It's really, really simple. So if you guys do have any issues with your contact forms not being sent, go ahead and watch those two videos. With that said, let's go ahead and jump back to the video. So congratulations, you guys have successfully completed the web design aspect of this tutorial. Give yourself a pat on the back, congratulations. And now let's move on to the next section and talk about the theme customizer. All right, party people, welcome to the theme customizer section of this video. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to use a theme customizer. I briefly explained what themes are earlier about how it controls different parts of your website, like the shop page, the blog page, and also the header and the footer of your websites. So in this part of the video, we'll be exploring the theme options. This will actually give your shop page and your product pages specific designs to fit whatever it is you're trying to achieve. So in this part of the video, we're gonna be talking all about the Bloxy theme customizer. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, so in this part of the video, we'll be talking about the theme customizer. Now the theme customizer controls various parts of the website that the page builder does not, such as the menu, and also controls various parts of the shop page where you can add in your images, you can add in a sidebar, and also adjust the color. So let me show you guys a little bit about the theme customizer. Now up here at the top, you'll see customize. Go ahead and click on customize. Okay, so this is the Bloxy theme customizer, and this is where you guys can adjust various parts of the websites. Now, earlier in the video, we did adjust the site identity and also the homepage settings where we apply the home and the blog page. And then over here, we use the site identity where we can just change the name and then also maybe upload a site icon. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single option with this theme because it's very robust, but I'll just focus on the more important aspects of this WordPress theme. So over here we have the header. Now the header will actually control the actual menu right here. So we have three different rows, right? We have the top row, the main row, and then we have the bottom row. Right now we're just using the main row. If you guys wanna drag in elements onto your menu, you guys can just go ahead and take it. So for example, I'll take a button and I'll just drag it onto the main menu. And then you'll see like the button appear. Now, if you guys do wanna create more rows, like for example, if you want like social icons at the top right, here, I'll drag in the social, and then you'll see we have these social icons here. You guys can also do this one more time and then create a third row, and this will basically create three different rows. Now, for every row, you guys could actually create different colors and styles. So, for example, for the top row, under the design, we can change this to like a gradient color, right? Or just like a standard color, right? And then for the middle row, same thing. So these all have the same exact options. So we have the general, which controls like the actual like row, right? This like uh, the height and stuff like that. And then also the design where you can design it. And the same thing for the bottom row as well, where you can adjust the height of the row, or you guys can go ahead and style it right here. 
Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to rearrange this. So I don't really want three rows, right? I just want one. But you guys can make three if you guys want to get really crazy, right? So over here, I'm going to go ahead and put the card over here and then put the button at the ends. And I'll get rid of the social and I'll also get rid of the search, right? But I do want to add the account. So I'll put the accounts right here. Okay. Now, also for every element right here, you guys can fully design and customize. For example, over here we have menu one. So what I'll do over here is click on the second one. And then when people hover over it, there'll be that little line underneath it. We also have type two where it adds this little color right here, right? And then we have type four, which is just this, uh, these two lines above and below the actual icon menu. I'll just select type one for now. Here you guys can fully adjust the like letter spacing and stuff like that. If you guys wanna space it out, right? You can do all this from right here. And then they have some other options where you can create different drop down options. So if you want the drop down right here to be a little different, you guys can go ahead and fully customize the drop down uh, options right here. And then of course, you guys can also adjust the design. So right now we have this dark design. And if you guys wanna change that, you can just change that to like white or something. And then you'll see it's like now white. Or you can change it to like, you know, gray or, or whatever, or, or blue, you know, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Now there is one drawback is the color that we use on the website doesn't sync with the actual theme. So there are two different separate products. So if you do wanna add the initial color code right here, you'll just go ahead and have to enter it right here, right? So if you want like that red background, you can just go ahead and find the color code from the Elementor page builder and then just apply it right here, all right? But uh, for now, I'll just leave it as color four, right? Now over here, we have the design options. So here we can actually fully adjust the fonts of the actual menu, and then also we can adjust the color. So I think right now we're using Poppins, right? So Poppins, right? So Poppins, all right. Okay, so we have Poppins right here. And then also we can change the design, right? So I don't like this color, right? So let's go ahead and click back out. And for the color, we'll just stick to like a, we'll just stick to like a, 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 a black, right? Something very black, you know, font color, change all these to black. And now you'll see that it's just a black menu right there. Okay. So over here on our menu, we did the same thing, right? We changed all this to black right here. And then here we have like the account. And then here we have this drop down cart right here. So going back over here, I'll go ahead and turn on the cart. And here we can actually change the actual uh, icon right here right? And then you can change the icon size. And then over here, you guys can fully design the icon size. So instead of this, we'll just change this to a black, right? And then the badge color as well, we'll change that to black. Okay, we got to get rid of that, uh, that blue color scheme they're giving us. Now there is a, an interesting option, and that is cart drawer. So if someone actually clicks right here, and it actually, um, See if I can actually open it. There we go, okay. So if someone hovers over this right here, there's actually more options right here. And this is the cart drawer option. If you guys do like this right here, you guys can turn it on. If you don't like that, you can just turn it off and then it'll no longer display, right? But I do like that. I think that's one unique feature with the Bloxy theme. So you guys can turn that on. And then over here under the design tab, here you guys can fully design the cart drawer. So you can actually design the, the, the color, the text, and then also the button color as well, okay? But just for tutorial sake, I'll turn it off, but I do recommend to design it because it is actually pretty cool. Now for the button over here, we can change the button over here to a few different styles. Uh, we can also change the design right here to a different sort of color. Maybe something like a red that we've been using, right? Let's go ahead and copy this one right here, right? We'll just copy this. And then we'll also just paste it over here, okay? So this is referring to the initial color and this is the hover color. That means when someone hovers over it, you can change the color, okay? So that is the header in a nutshell. Pretty simple to understand. You guys can just kind of fiddle with this and mess around with this and you guys will definitely understand this, right? Now over here we have the tablet mobile header and this is also where you guys can fully customize this. So here we have a bunch of different pages, right? We have the mobile menu. Now we actually need to assign a specific menu to this canvas area. So right here under mobile menu, I'm gonna put primary menu. So I wanna use our primary menu for the mobile visitors, okay? And there's a lot more options here. You guys can change like the toggle. All right, so here's like the little type one, type two, type three, right? We have different little toggles, right? And then for the design, I'll just go ahead and maybe change the font color to like red or something, you know, just a little red. There we go. 
okay? Now also you guys can add in more elements on this mobile menu as well. So you guys can go ahead and drag in more elements. So for example, I'll take this button and I'll put it right here. And then you'll see we have this button display on the mobile menu, okay? So you guys can go ahead and you know go crazy with this. You can knock yourself out. If you guys do want to design the background as well, all you gotta do is click on the gear icon right here. And then this is where you can style the mobile menu for the background and all these other options, all right? Pretty amazing, right? This is why we use the Bloxy theme because it just has so many options and features to really enhance your e-commerce store. So now I'll go ahead and go back and I'll publish this. Okay, so that is pretty much it guys for the header. So you guys can go ahead and design this and decorate this on your own free time. All right, awesome. Okay, so now that we know how to use the header, now let's talk about the footer. So on our demo website over here, if we scroll to the bottom, you guys are gonna notice that we have this footer right here. Now, you guys can make a custom footer from scratch using Elementor, but I think the theme works a little bit better here, okay? So here we have a four column row, right? We have the image, we have some text, we have some products, pages, and then a contact us. So let me show you guys how to create a footer for your website. So over here, we're gonna scroll down. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select a specific row, right? So for the top row right here, I'm gonna select a four column row, right? So now we have four columns. We have one, two, three, and four. And it's very simple, you know, it's very similar to the header builder. All we're gonna do now is drag in widgets, right? So widget area one, I'll drag in a widget, okay? Now here, if I click on widget area one, so essentially what this is, it's Gutenberg. So now we're going to use Gutenberg to build the footer. So right here, I'm gonna put image or we can put logo. I think we have logo, right? Do we have logo? No, we don't, we have image. Okay, now for the image, I'm going to use our logo right here, right? And then you'll see our logo here at the bottom. Now below that, I'm gonna add in some text, so paragraph. And this will just be like, you know, just some basic text about your company, right? So I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'll paste this below that. All right, and voila, we got some text. I think this is too much here. We're gonna, we're gonna get rid of this. You know, I, I, think that's, I think that's a really clean, good amount, right? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so that is widget area one. Now let's add in the second one. So here we have a title and then we have products. So over here under widget area two, I'll take which area two, right? And here we're gonna add in blocks, okay? So right here, I'll put in the products. Okay, but I wanna make sure that this is actually a heading text. So over here, I'm gonna put heading, and this will be our H2, okay? Next, we're going to add in some products. So products, product list, and here we have five products. So I want five products to show. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. We have products. Now, to be honest, guys, I really don't like the Gutenberg editor. I really am not a fan of it, just because before with WordPress, they had like a really nice default editor. And now like they sort of created this like kind of visual builder, but it's kind of weird, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, but it works, right? And it's clean code. It's just the UI could have some improvements. Okay, so next we have pages, right? So over here, uh, we're going to add another widget, right? Widget area three, right? And same thing, right? So first we have heading, and this will be pages. All right, cool. Here plus. Now what I did on my website was I actually created a custom page list. Okay, so here are the pages. Now you guys can also do what I did over here. And what I did was I just used basic text and I can just link them to various pages. So I don't really like the pages because you can't design it. You can't edit it at all. So what I did actually was, I'll just go ahead and show you guys. I actually created a text right here. Let's see if we can find, I'm sorry, a paragraph, right? Paragraph. And then this could be like home, right? And then this could be like, you know, a home about, right? And then shop. And then what you can do right here is when you double click on it, you can just click on the link and then just link them to your home page, right? So .tutorialdomain.com. 
And then there you go. So now this is a link, and if someone clicks on it, it'll just take them to the home page. So you guys can go either way. You can add a page list there, or you guys don't even have to use the page list. You guys can use anything that you guys want. So there are tons of elements right here under the browse all section. You guys can pretty much add anything right here, including a video, a Facebook like box, or anything that you guys choose, okay? All right, so I'll go ahead now and just uh, close out of this right here. And the last one is the contact us. So over here, I'll just copy this. And the same thing, guys, right? So over here, widget area four. Okay. And then I'll click on this. This will be a heading. All right. So contact us. All right. Heading text, H2. All right. And then over here, I'll just go ahead and throw in some content. Okay. All right, so that is how we can create a footer. And you guys can actually make more columns right here. So you see here, we have this bottom run right here that says copyrights. You guys can like either just delete this or you guys can just leave it, right? But I'll just go ahead and delete it for now. And once you guys do this, you guys can also design it. So right here under the top row, here we can change the design and the color. So you guys can change like the background color. You guys can add a divider in the middle. And then also they have some other styling options where you can adjust the space and also the container width. Pretty cool, right? So now that I showed you guys how to make this footer, there's one more important option, and that is the basically the mobile version, which we're gonna talk about in the very next section. So over here, I'll change this to mobile. And if you guys do use mobile, I highly recommend to stack the elements. So over here, you guys will see that we have this, uh, this stacked. I recommend to set this because if you guys have it to two columns, it might come out to sort of like this on mobile users, right? It's gonna, it looks kind of weird, right? So always make sure that you guys select stacked right here for your footer so that the elements stack on top of each other. All right, and I think it looks a lot better for mobile users. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and go back here and we'll go back again and we'll change this back to the desktop version. Okay, so let's go ahead now and publish and save everything that we've done. Now let's go to the shop page. So over here, I'll click on shop. And this is also where Bloxy shines. So over here we have WooCommerce, right? And here is the general options. Now the general options will allow you guys to design parts of the website, like the star rating. So if people rate it, uh, you can adjust the star rating like right here. So star rating, you guys can change the color of the actual stars, right? And then also we can go ahead and change like the info color, right? So when someone adds it to the cart, you can go ahead and change all that right here such as the error messages, the success messages, and so on and so forth. You guys should change it to fit your brand, right? And then here you have like product badges. So if something's on sale right here, you guys can go ahead and adjust the sale badge right here. And then for the design tab, you guys can fully design the colors of everything for the design tab. You guys can also choose to add a store notice right here. And a store notice just adds a little notice here at the bottom. This is great if you guys wanna add in like a coupon code. So use Daryl10 for a 10% discount. Or you can add this like as a Black Friday sale or a Christmas sale or any type of information you want to showcase to your visitors, right? So I'll go ahead and publish that. And then of course you guys can design this as well by changing the color. You know, I changed mine to black, okay? So that is like the general options, right? So now that you guys know how to use the general options, now let's go ahead and take a look at the product archives. Now this is actually referred to your shop page. So they should change this to shop page, okay? So here we go. So here we have the page title and here you guys can actually choose to have the page title or you can just take it off, right? So it's strictly optional. If you guys do decide to have a page title, you guys can design it, right? So over here on my website, you'll see that we have a shop page, a background image, and then we have some breadcrumbs, right? So I can do all this right here. So I can turn on the breadcrumbs, okay? Now right here, I wanna add in a custom background image. So custom, I'll select an image, and I think I use like the shoes, didn't I? All right, I use, uh, I use this one right here, okay? So there is the color. And then I just added a very a faint background overlay to it. So over here under the design tab, this is where we can design everything, right? So I think right here we added, so right here we used a white text, right? So for the font, change this to white, but I'll make this larger, right? Make this like uh, 60 pixels. And I'll change this to pop-ins, right? We'll stick to our Stick to our uh, default fonts. Ooh, it's so ugly. We gotta make it bold, you know? Poppins is really only nice and bold, guys. It's kind of weird how that works. I, I don't know why, but it's just, <laughs> it's just how it is, right? So here we have the description font text as well, and that is this text down here. 
Um, but I'll go ahead and change the breadcrumb font to like red, all right? Not too much, there we go. I guess that'll work, right? Or not all of it, right? So just the, here, let's just change this to white actually. There we go, okay? So this one's white, but the rest is red, okay? And then the overlay color. We'll just turn on the overlay right there, and then there you go. So it adds a really nice overlay right there. Really, really nice, okay? So uh, that is pretty much it for the title right there. So I think the page title is good to go. But we're not done, we have to go back. So over here, I'll go back. And here we can go ahead and adjust the actual shop page and the entire structure. So the first thing is we have type one, and we also have type two, right? So you guys can choose two different uh, you know, styles to design your products. Here I'll select type one, and I'll select a three column row, right? And I'll change this to three rows as well. So here we also have some other options where you guys can add something to the page. I do wanna add a sidebar, so I'm gonna turn on the sidebar. Okay, now I know we can't see it just yet, but not to worry, we'll come back to the sidebar in just a little bit. So scrolling up here, I wanna actually change the option right here. I wanna actually change the style and design of the cards. So here we actually have the card options. Here you guys can hide or showcase specific elements. For example, if you guys want to hide the product image, you can hide it or you can display it. You can also move them around. You can mix and match, right? So you can put the title below the price if you wanna go that route, right? And the same thing for like categories. You can put this up here, right? And we can go ahead and take the price and put it above and below each other. So you guys can fully design this page. And also for further customization, you can open this right here and you guys can adjust things like the bottom spacing. And a lot of these options have different styles like where you can change like you know the butts and spacing the style and also add like an underline so for every element there is further customization so you'll just have to go through these here and just find out what fits best for your e-commerce websites here we have the gap you know you guys can add a gap and also a row gap as well below that okay but over here is the design tab and this is a little bit more important so this is where you guys can adjust the font color the price font category font, and then also the background color. So if you guys do wanna change like the background color here, ooh, that's a really hot red. We'll make it a little bit more subtle, right? And I'll take this, copy it, and then I'll also paste it in there like this. Okay, so these are the styling options for the actual fonts and all of the text right here. So if you guys do wanna adjust this, you guys can go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and change the title font to Poppins, right? like that. And I think that's a, uh, I think that's all, all good, right? Look, looks really nice, you know? Awesome. How about that? Okay. Now, so now that I showed you guys how to design the card options and show you guys how to manipulate these elements, now let's talk about the sidebar. So let's go back over here and I'll go ahead and open up the sidebar. And I want to add the sidebar to the left side. Okay. We can't see the sidebar right now because we have no widgets. So let's just go ahead now and just save it for now. Okay. But that is pretty much it for the shop page. As you guys can tell, you guys can use the theme options here to design everything. Now let's click on one of these products. So the next is the single product. So right here, I'll click on single products. And here you guys can actually adjust the structure of the single product. So here we have a narrow width. We have a normal width. We have a left sidebar. And then we also have a right sidebar. So you guys can add a sidebar right here, and we will do that in the very next section. But I think something like uh, normal width is good for me, so I'm gonna leave it there. You guys can also make it boxed or make it wide. I think box is actually pretty cool. You know, it creates this little box atmosphere. You know, I don't know, that's actually kind of cool. I'm gonna leave that. I think uh, I think that works out for me. <laughs> you know, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that, right? And over here, we have the design option where you guys can go ahead and change the background color to, you know, you can change the content area background color right here, right, like that. And then also you can change other parts, like, you know, you can add a shadow and all these other styling options right here. Now for the page elements, this is where you guys can add in some more page elements. So if you guys don't want to have like related and upsells, you guys can take that off. If you don't want product tabs, which are these ones here at the bottom, you guys can also just go ahead and delete those as well. If you guys do wanna have those on, there are further options where you guys can adjust it. Like here we have type two, type three, and type four. You know, I think type two is actually pretty cool. And then over here, of course, you guys can go ahead and style this on your own free time. 
So just remember you guys, for every single element, there's also styling options for everything. So as you guys can tell, Bloxy is a very robust theme with just tons of customization features, right? And then here we have the product elements. So for example, if you guys wanna add in like payment methods, you guys can do that. And then payment methods will be displayed right here. And you guys can show or hide things, right? If you guys don't want the star, you can you know hide that. If you wanna add the payment methods above the add to cart, we can go ahead and put it above the add to cart right here. And then of course, for all these right here, they have additional customization options where you guys can style this and just add things that are more appropriate for your store. Now there's one option here that's actually really underrated, but I think is a great touch is the additional info. So I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna drag this to the top right here. So additional info will create these little promo check boxes and this will actually encourage people to purchase the product. If you click on the arrow right here, you guys can actually add as many as you want. So you can clone it and add more and more and more. And all you gotta do is just open this right here and then just change the text right here. So this can be like, you know, 30 day money back. All right, go ahead and close that, close this. And what we can do is we can move this around, right? So I can put this maybe above the, uh, you know, right below the price, right? Right there, I think it looks really cool. And then of course, for the design tab, this is where you guys can design all of the colors and the elements on the single product page, okay? So the add to cart button, I'll change this to like red, right? Like a very faint red, I'll copy this. And then I'll also do this for these elements right here. I'll also change the quality color right here to this the red color we got going on, right? So I'll change this quality color right here to red, right? And also we have these other colors. Now, a lot of these colors will be actually applied when you guys assign the global color palettes. You guys can always click on edit right here and just go ahead and the design tab and then just change it, right? So if you guys wanna change this to like a red color, you can do that. And the initial color, I'll just change that to like black or something. Okay, so to change these right here, you have to go to the colors right here under the general options. And then for the color one, this is where you can assign those specific colors, right? So this will actually apply right here and that's where you guys can change these little checkbox colors. So overall, I think we have a really nice product page. As you guys can tell, it just looks really slick. We have to change this color right here. So you guys can always do this by clicking on edits under the design. And what we can do here is just change the text color right here. So the font color will change that to like black. And I'll do the same thing for these other ones. So the active will change it to black, right? And so on and so forth. And yeah, everything looks fantastic. So oop, you guys see that? So over here, we probably should change that to red for the hover, right? So over here, edit, design, and then for the background color, we'll change that to red right there as well. So when I hover over it, it'll stay red. Okay, so that's how you guys can create a really nice looking product page. As you guys can tell, this is really slick. It's very encouraging and it just looks fantastic. So now let's go back over here to the shop page. So let's go ahead and go back to the shop. Okay, so now that we talked about the shop page and the single products, now let's talk about the sidebar. So to design the sidebar, all you're gonna do is scroll down over here under widgets and you're gonna see WooCommerce sidebar. And remember earlier how we added in blocks to the footer and the header. Now you guys are gonna do that right here. So right here, I'll first put in an image, right? And this is gonna be like a promo banner, right? So I think I have it in here somewhere. It's actually on my computer. Here, I'll go ahead and upload it. Here we go. It's a little Cyber Monday promo bar thingy, right? Here we go. All right, it's really nice, right? So here we have the image. Okay, so next we'll click on the plus and we're gonna add in a filter by price. So filter by price, you'll see it right here. And there you go. Now it will display the filter once you guys close the theme customizer. So don't worry about that. Next we have popular products. So we have products, product list, right? And here we have five, right? And instead of products, I'll put like featured products. Okay, you guys can choose to like, you know, add a little bit more customization or you guys can change the order and stuff like that. Next, we have the uh, product demo, right? This is just like a YouTube video. So below that, I put in a paragraph here and this is demo or product demo. 
And then below that, we have like a YouTube video, right? So YouTube, and then I'll just paste the URL right here. Now for this product demo text, I'm gonna go ahead and change this, right? So I'm gonna change this to a heading text. Okay, so product demo. And that's it. So that's how we can create a really nice looking sidebar. And as you guys can tell, once you guys just add in like elements here and there, you know, everything really comes together. You know, the colors look great, the structure looks great, and everything looks just fine. So that's how you guys can create a shop page using the Bloxy theme. So I'll go ahead and click on publish for now. We'll scroll back. And now let's go back over here to general. So next we have the checkout page. So I'll go over here to the actual carts and then show you guys the checkout page, All right? Proceed to checkout. All right, so here we go. We got the checkout page. It looks like here we have to adjust the hover menu for the buttons. So we should probably do that in the color scheme section. But one important option guys is, remember earlier how we created a terms and conditions page? We can go ahead and add the TOS right here. You guys can also add the privacy policy if you guys want to do that. You guys can also update it right here. Now, what's really cool is users will have to check a box and agree with your terms in order to keep going forward, right? But uh, here you guys can choose to make specific information required. So if you guys want to add a coupon form, you can do that. And we're going to make coupons in the WooCommerce section of this tutorial. You guys can choose to make certain sections required or some optional, right? Or you guys can just hide it, right? If you guys want to hide the... Uh, name, you can hide the name. And then also we can hide the address line, right? So the address line as well. So that is pretty much it for the checkout and the cart. One thing I do wanna address is these colors. So to fix these colors, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually uh, go back over here under the colors, right? And here for links, I wanna change this over here to like a red, right? This is where you guys can adjust this option. So for color two, I'm gonna change this to red, right? All right, and there we go. Okay, make sure to also change the hover for the links and then you'll see it all comes red, right? So in here is our shop page. And as you guys can tell, it looks amazing. And then also if I click on the basketball nets, you guys are gonna see also this page just looks really amazing, right? Really nicely structured, great colors. I mean, it just looks super vibrant. So that is how you guys can use the Bloxy theme customizer. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And with that said, let's move on to the next section. Okay, so now that we built our website for the desktop, now we need to actually optimize it for all mobile devices. So in this part of the video, we're gonna focus more on mobile optimization. So we're gonna optimize our website for tablet and also phone devices. And in the beginning of this video, I promise you guys, we're gonna have a fast website, right? I'm, I'm gonna deliver. So we're going to install a free plugin that's going to give you guys an A PageSpeed score on the Google PageSpeed Insights. I personally use this plugin on my website, darylwilson.com, and my websites load at under two seconds. So we're gonna make sure that you guys have a fast e-commerce website in this part of the video. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, party people. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to fully optimize your WordPress website for mobile devices and also tablet devices. We're gonna run your website through the Google Mobile Friendly Test Checker, and you guys are gonna get a green check mark from Google. We're also gonna make sure your website has a fast page loading time. This is my website, darylwilson.com, and as you guys can see, my website has around a 98% performance grade, and we're gonna make sure your website has a 90% or better. Okay, so in this part of the video, we're gonna make sure your website is blazing fast and we're also gonna make sure it's friendly for all mobile devices. So the first thing, let's go ahead now and turn on the page builder. So up here, let's click on edit with Elementor. Okay, now there's a few ways on how we can make our website mobile responsive and I'll give you guys some really cool strategies and things that I use on my website, darewilson.com. Now the first thing is down here, you'll see responsive mode. I'll click on responsive mode and here at the top, you're gonna see three devices. We have the desktop, we have tablets, and then we have the mobile, right? So this is what your website looks like on all three devices. So I'll first be showing you guys how to optimize it for tablets, and then we'll go into the phone. Now, as soon as you guys turn on the tablet right here, if you guys click on an element, you're gonna see that you guys can now go ahead and design this. And right here, you'll see that there's this option, right? We have desktop, tablet, and then we have mobile, right? So what we can do is we can actually modify specific elements for specific devices. So right here under the tablets, I'll click on center. I wanna make this centered, right? For this text as well, I'll go ahead and also make this centered. And then over here for the text, we'll also do the same thing and we'll center that text. 
right here, same thing, right? We'll go ahead and center that. And I think over here, I'll click on the flex box. So I don't wanna click on the actual elements here. I wanna click on the flex box because you guys can actually control elements here using the flex box. And what I'll do here is under the tablets, I'll click on the center, just like that. Okay, you guys could have also done this right here through the flex box on the top right here, but sometimes it doesn't work well for some elements. So I just choose to use the elements. You guys can go both ways, right? You guys can use the flex box or you guys can just use the elements. Now here we have this background. Now this background can work or we can, or we can go ahead and change it. So I'm gonna right click and then click on edit container. Okay. Okay, now over here, I'll go to style. Now here we have the image and a new feature with Elementor is you guys can now change the image for specific devices, which is really cool because before you guys couldn't, right? So you guys can always change like the image here if you guys wanna go that route or you guys can just add a solid color. Now we have a few options here. There's several ways on how we can optimize this and this really depends on how you want to design your websites. You guys can go with the route of actually changing the image for specific devices. So over here, you'll see that under the tablets, we can actually adjust the image here. So I can just like put a different image. And if that works out for you or for your website, you guys can always go that route, right? And then you'll see here how the image changes, right? Or we can, you know, go back to the other one here, or you guys can try something else, which this is really cool because before you could not do this with Elementor, but now you guys can. So I'll just go ahead and stick with our primary image for, you know, for this video right here. But what's really cool is let's say, for example, you're like, you know what, I like this, but it's just in the wrong position. You guys can also adjust the position for specific devices. So here we have center center. We also have bottom center, right? And then we have bottom left and so on and so forth. You guys can also adjust the width right here for the tablet as well. So if you guys wanna change the width, you guys can go ahead and change the width of this like that if you wanna go that route. Uh, over here under the display size for the tablet, we can go ahead and select the cover, right? Okay, you guys can also go this route here as well, right? Where we can move the image around and stuff like that. Now you guys can see here how this text is actually kind of hard to see because this guy right here, how you know the white sock is over the white text. We can also adjust the background overlay for the specific device. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna change the location. So I'm gonna put mine to zero. Also the location, I want it to zero. And then I wanna change the angle to 360. When I do that, essentially what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm just going to go ahead and apply a large overlay around the entire screen. because so I think this right here is much better for tablets than that split screen effect. It really only works on desktop devices. So I'm gonna use this specific style for our tablet, right? Next, we have these elements here. And you guys have noticed that these elements are kind of broken. You'll see here how the text is kind of like weird like that. If this ever happens, this is not optimized. And all you gotta do is make the text smaller. So I'll click on the icon box. And for the style, for the content, we're gonna make the text a little bit smaller. So for the title, you'll see for size, we can now adjust it for tablets. Here, I'll just put like wide range of products, right? Something like that, right? And then I'll go ahead and also, maybe I should get rid of this border for the tablet because it doesn't really work well, you know, for the tablet. So what I can do is get rid of the border as well. So what I'll do is click on the flex box for the style, for the border. Here we have the tablets. I'll just put this to zero. Right, and that's just gonna get rid of the border, right? There's gonna be no border. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna copy and paste all of this, right? So I'll go ahead and copy and then paste that. Paste style, paste style, and then paste style, right? And then I'll do the same thing for the elements, right? So copy, I'm sorry, this one, copy, and then paste style, right? And paste style, and paste style. Well, it worked for, th this one's still a little too large, right? So we have to fix this, right? So under content, we'll just make this a little bit more smaller. Okay, so maybe like 21, there we go, 21. And this one here, um, I think we should actually change this as well because the E doesn't look correct, right? So over here under the content for topography, we'll just change that again. I think 21 is the hotspot. Yeah, there we go, 21. All right, cool. So there you go. So now that looks a lot cleaner for the tablet device. Same thing here, right? I think this part looks good, right? But we have to change this right here. This is a little bit too large. So same thing, right? And all that we gotta do is just make sure that we change it to like maybe 30. 
So now nah, maybe 40. Let, let's see how far it can go. Okay, I think around, yeah, 30, 36 is like a good spot. All right, so we'll go ahead and copy this, paste the style, and then also paste the style. All right, perfect. So that is pretty much how we can fix this section here, right? We'll go ahead and scroll down. Now, the cool thing is your products will always be responsive. So this is actually due to a plugin. So they're always gonna be responsive. There's no need for us to do anything. We have this section right here, which is pretty cool, right? So I'll go ahead and just, uh, I don't know, I think this is okay, right? What do you guys think? I think this is actually pretty good, right? We can just, uh, yeah, I think this is actually pretty good. So we're just gonna skip this section. I could make this text a little smaller maybe. You know, I think that's the only thing I can do here. Maybe just a little bit smaller, right? Right, go ahead and keep scrolling. Now this section here we have to fix, right? So over here under the style. For the digits, I'll go to topography and we're gonna adjust the size here, right? All right, a little bit, there we go, okay. Scroll down here, blog looks good, and here is the footer, and this is controlled by the theme, and this looks much better, right? Okay, so we have successfully optimized our website for tablets, congratulations! Okay, go ahead now and click on updates. Now we need to also update it for the uh, mobile. So here I'll click on mobile. So here is the mobile view right here, and as you guys can tell, it does look pretty good, but I actually wanna show you guys a strategy here that actually a lot of websites use, including mine, and that's actually creating two different landing pages. So we're gonna create a separate landing page specifically for mobile devices. If you guys are wondering why we're gonna do this, it's because it gives you a lot more control over your website. So the first thing I wanna do is, I'm gonna go ahead now and scroll down right here. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna borrow something. I wanna borrow this right here. So right here, I'm gonna click on the little six dots right here. I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save this as a template. This is gonna be our mobile, mobile landing page. Okay, just uh, bear with me guys, if you're not sure what I'm doing yet, just, uh, you know, just, just, just stick around, right? We're gonna go ahead and scroll up over here. And what I wanna do now is I wanna load that. So up here, plus, folder, and here is the mobile landing page. I'll insert this. Okay. So what I wanna do now is I actually want to design this for the mobile. So this is gonna be our new landing page. So ready, set, and go. And then here, obviously, we can change the text to something else, right? But I think this text is a little bit too large. So we're gonna, we're gonna reduce the size of this text here, right? So here we go. We have our small text, right? Okay. And we can also actually make this larger, right? I think this should be a lot larger, right? Ready, set, and go. Ready, set, and go. And maybe we should grab an element. I can even use this right here. So I'll right click and duplicate this. And I'm gonna copy this and drag it down here, right? Ready, set, and go, right? And this can obviously be some sort of like, oh, you know, buy it on this, buy it on that, or something like that, or whatever you wanna talk about, so you guys can apply it here. We'll go ahead and make this a little bit larger, right? So for the minimum height for the mobile, I wanna make this just a little bit larger, right? There we go, ready, set, and go. There we go, perfect. So now it's just like this, it's just like a message and a button, right? Because for mobile devices, that's all they really need. You know, they don't need all this different information. We wanna portray information as fast as we can for mobile users because they have a very small attention span, to be honest. So uh, yeah, so this is our landing page. Now what I'm gonna do here is, here's a trick. So I'm gonna right click on this and edit container, and then I'm gonna go to the advanced section. We're gonna scroll down and here you're going to see responsive. So what I wanna do is I wanna hide this on the mobile, okay? So that means this will not display on mobile and Elementor actually grays it out, right? And over here, I want to right click on this one, right? Edit container, go to the advanced and then I'm gonna scroll down right here and go to the responsive and I want to hide this on desktop and tablets. So essentially what I'm saying here is I only want to display this on mobile, right? And I do not want to display this on mobile. So that means when someone comes to our website, they will not see this. They will only see this right here. This is a great way on how to create a custom landing page for mobile devices because it makes more sense because sometimes you don't need all that information on mobile devices, right? So congratulations, this is our new mobile landing page. Pretty slick, right? And here, this could be like shop now, right? 
So shop now. And then right here, you just take them to your shop page. So I'll just type in shop and voila. So right now, they go to our website. It says click here, go to our shop, buy something, high converting landing page, right? Make sense? Okay, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down here. We have our icons right here, looking good. Everything down here is looking pretty good. If there's anything we need to adjust, we can go ahead and adjust it. I'm gonna make this text a little bit smaller, right? So over here, topography, right? I'll make that a little bit smaller. In fact, you should probably reduce the text, guys. Yeah, just reduce it, I guess, you know, I don't know. Keep scrolling down here, looks good, right? Okay, now there's something I do wanna mention. For example, we have this section right here. You really don't need this on a mobile device, right? Like it's just not really necessary because you guys can see it's just, it's just a bunch of numbers and it's hard to actually see what this is talking about. We can hide specific elements on mobile devices. So I'm gonna right click on this and then go to the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go to the advanced. So I'm gonna click on the, so I'm gonna click on this element here, go to advanced. And then I'm gonna scroll down and under the responsive, I wanna hide this on mobile. I just don't wanna display this on mobile because there's just no reason. So if someone comes to our website, they're gonna see on flash sale, they're gonna see this bar, and then it's just gonna show the products, right? Which is a very uh, fast and convenient way to view the websites. And that is pretty much it. So that is our mobile website. Let's go ahead now and click on update. Okay, so now that we optimized our website for mobile, there is something I need to let you guys know. So during the creation of this video, believe it or not, Google actually got rid of their mobile friendly test tool, which lets people know if their website is optimized for mobile. So yeah, they actually made a decision to get rid of it. So usually my videos, I have users run it through that, but what you guys can do is go to Google and just type in mobile checker for websites. And there are tons of websites that will actually scan your websites and you know let you know if it's mobile friendly. Now I have tried some of these, some of these were not really good. A lot of them are paid or they want your email. So on your own free time, if you guys want, you guys can go ahead and just do some searching on your own, find a website that will verify it for mobile. But if it does look good on your end, like if you're actually looking at your website, like on a mobile device and it looks good, you guys should be all good to go. So that's all I wanted to let you guys know. So sorry about that, but uh, let's go ahead and go to the next section. Okay, so now that we talked about how to fully optimize your websites, now let's talk about the speed test. So over here, if I go to the Google Page Bid Insights, you're gonna see for mobile, we have around a 44, and for desktop, we have around an 87. That's actually still not bad, but we're gonna go ahead and install a plugin that will actually make your website much faster. It'll fully optimize every aspect of your WordPress websites with no experience needed. So let's do that. We're gonna go over here to my demo website, and this is a much larger website. So this website over here is not optimized, but by installing this plugin, it's going to be much faster. So let's go over here to dashboard. And I personally use this plugin on my website, darylwilson.com, and it works wonders. In fact, I made a video on it. It is like the top ranking video on YouTube and everyone loves it. So over here under plugins, I'll click on add new. And over here under search plugins, we're gonna type in Serifinite. So I'll go ahead and just uh, zoom in for you guys. It's a very weird name on how they spelled it, right? So it's Serifinite or Serifinite, right? And here is a plugin that you guys are going to install. It's called the Serifinite Accelerator plugin. Go ahead and click on install now, and then click on activate. Now, once you guys install this plugin, you guys must disable the Lightspeed Cache plugin because this plugin is also a caching plugin. So I'm going to now disable that. So over here under Lightspeed Cache, I'm gonna deactivate this. All right, so once I deactivate that plugin, I'm gonna scroll down over here and on the bottom, you're gonna see Accelerator. Go ahead and click on Settings. So down here, you're gonna see License. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the Download the Extended Free Plugin version. What this is gonna do, it's going to go to their website and it's going to download this plugin. So right here, I'll click on download for free and then it'll download the accelerator.zip and you're just gonna upload this to your websites. Going back over here, plugins, add new, and then I'm gonna upload that plugin. So upload plugin, choose the file, here is the plugin, then I'll click on install now. Okay, so I want to click on replace current with uploaded. Okay, and then once we install the plugin, we'll click on go to plugin installer. So here is the plugin right here. And all we're gonna do is click on settings. Once you guys install the extended plugin, here you're gonna see under the simple, you'll click on begin setup wizard. 
So I want to select full functionality, okay? Then I'll click on next. Now it's going to run some tests on the website. So I'll go ahead and click on self-diagnosis. All right, so everything is good to go. Here I'll click on next. So there is something to note about always a high score. If you guys do have always a high score, the backend could be a little bit slower when you're building your websites, but your visitors will have a better experience on your websites. So that's just something to note, right? Right here, I'll click on next. And here it says, what is the performance of your hosting? I'll just put low, right? Because we're using shared basic hosting. We're not using like dedicated or we're not using like large servers. So I'll put low, then click on next. Right here, I'm gonna put not sure, and then I'll click on next. Uh, I don't use a CDN, so I'm just gonna skip this. And then I'll click on finish. And that's it. So now the plugin has fully optimized your entire websites, including the images, the headers, the CSS, everything that you can possibly need. And we can test it. So let's take this domain right here, and let's retest it now. So let's go back over here to the mobile friendly test, or I'm sorry, the PageSpeed Insights. Okay, so you guys can see right here as our desktop, we have an 8780. And then for mobile, we have a 4479, right? So let's go ahead now and retest this. I'll go ahead now and paste this over here and then click on analyze. And just like that, you guys will see, we now have a 93 on performance for mobile. Accessibility needs a little work, but overall you'll see that our performance, our SEO and our best practices are met according to Google. You guys are gonna see that we have some really good stats right here for the mobile. And then here I'll click on desktop and voila, we have a 96% for performance, which is the most important metric for fast websites. Now, if you guys compare this to the previous results, you guys are gonna see it has a drastic difference, right? So just installing that plugin will actually make your website much faster. And I do recommend that you guys do this for your first website because optimizing the entire website for your first time can be a little tricky, but this plugin solves all of that problem. So that is pretty much it for the mobile optimization and the fast website part of this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Now, when I first started designing websites, I thought all my websites looked amazing, right? And when I would make the website and show someone, they were like, yeah, it looks terrible. And I was like, whatever, man, you know? The reality is I was not a good designer, but in my head, I thought I was because it was my, you know, my creation, right? So in this part of the video, I'll show you guys our Elementor toolkits. Me and my team, we have a team of five designers and we actually created more than 330 Elementor toolkits that you guys can easily import on your website with one click. And we actually create 10 every single month and we have more than, I think like 90 e-commerce websites to choose from. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys our toolkits to see if this is something that you guys might want for your e-commerce store. All right, now I have one quick announcement. If you guys are in the business of building an e-commerce website and you guys need professional help, we actually offer several Elementor toolkits that are designed for e-commerce websites. So over here under my website, we actually sell Elementor template and toolkits on our website. We have more than 330 toolkits and we add 10 every single month. We have tons and tons of templates for you guys to choose from, right? Now over here, you guys can actually select filters. So we have real estate, we have political, we have a children retail, but right here I'll select WooCommerce. So we actually have 64 templates that we provide for e-commerce. And I'll be honest, these are created by some of the best designers in the world. So over here, for example, if you guys wanna check these out, you'll go ahead and click on like a Quipster right here or a car clinic, and you guys can get a live demo of this. Now we actually include various parts of the websites, like we include the blog, we include custom shop pages, custom product shop pages, and then we even create pop-ups like this for all of our templates. So every template right here, as you guys see, has more than like 15 plus pages in it. Here you'll see that we have this single product and we actually create custom single product and custom shop pages all from scratch. Here's a few more, right here we are selling watches for this specific e-commerce websites. And we've actually created little, little, you know, uh, you know, little things over it so users can actually click on it and get notices and stuff like that. Over here we have a furniture website where we are selling, you know, pieces of furniture. And you guys can use this and even sell other products. Here, for example, we added a sidebar and we created like a really nice custom sidebar as you guys can tell. We integrated testimonials, we have social icons, and then we custom created like images right here and a button over the image. And then over here, if I just click on something, everything is fully custom, right? Even the product page. 
So right here, you guys will see that we have this custom product page that we created. And we have so many guys, we have like more than like 300 and something. So there's pretty much something for everyone. Here we also have this other furniture website where we have just tons of different pages. Here is our shop page. And the same thing, so we have this really nice background. And then we have a filter by price, and we just, you know, we always mix it up. We don't have the same copy and paste style. So we do mix it up. We do have different styles and stuff like that for all of our template kits. If you guys do want to have access to all these kits, you guys can buy each kit for, I think, 15 bucks, or you guys can go get the all access. So right here under the all access, I'll click on all access, and then I'll click on get all access. So for a single kit, we will sell a kit for $29. You guys get support for six months. If you guys want access to all of our kits on a subscription, you guys can pay $59 for the year, and that includes all of our future templates. If you guys wanna just pay one time and never pay again and get access to all of our future kits, we have a lifetime plan that costs around $99. So if you guys are interested in this, I'll go ahead and leave a link to our shop in the description. Now these do require Elementor Pro, so you guys must have Elementor Pro in order to use these kits. And once you guys do have Elementor Pro and you guys purchase the kits, you guys can actually watch this video right here. And this will actually show you guys how to import the toolkit. It'll actually import everything, such as the fonts, the colors, the styles, and everything that you guys need that you guys have seen on the demos. If you guys have any questions for me about this, let me know in the comments below. And with that said, let's go to the next section. Hey guys, this is just a quick reminder. So as we're making all of these buttons and pages, I just wanna make sure that you guys go back to all these buttons and link them to where they're supposed to be linked to. You guys can also go over here under the shop, I'm sorry, the link, and just type in the name of the page, right? So for example, shop now, we'll change it to our shop, right? So if they click on this, it'll redirect them to our shop. And then for the contacts over here, I'll go ahead and type in contact, and this will actually uh, just pull it up right here. So contact, right? Here, I'll click on updates. Now, earlier in the video, we actually did go ahead and create these product categories. Now, if you guys are not sure where these pages are, let me quickly go ahead and show you guys so you guys can link these to your various uh, product category pages. So over here, I'll click on exit. Here, I'll go back to the dashboard. Now over here under the products, you're gonna see categories. Now, for example, we have these various product categories and right here, I'll just go ahead and go to the shoes and click on view. You're gonna see it's gonna take us to the shoes category, right? So all you're gonna do is copy this permalink right here and then you're gonna go back to your home page, and then you're gonna paste it in. So I'll go back over here to the home page and then I'll turn on the page builder. And then we'll go down to the product categories and then you'll just paste in the product category, right? So over here, I'll just paste it in. Now, obviously this is gonna link to shoes. So I'll just, you know, here we go. I'll just put this to shoes, right? And there you go. Now it's a shoes category, right? So see how easy that is? So uh, once we do this, I'll go ahead and view the page and then I will click on the shoes category and click on shop now. And then it'll redirect us to the shoes category where you'll see a variety of products from our shoes category. So make sure that you guys do go through your websites and go ahead and link all of the buttons appropriately and where you want them to go. Just wanna give you guys a quick reminder. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Now, one thing also, I just wanna remind everyone watching this video, whenever someone purchases something on your website, they will also have their own personal custom dashboard. This dashboard right here is actually created by WooCommerce and the Bloxy theme will actually create it within the menu if you add the account elements. You guys can also access the account page by just going over here to the pages right here and clicking on all pages. And then you're gonna see that here is the account. So if I click on view, this is the current my account. So your users will actually have their own personal custom dashboard and here they can access their orders. They can see their downloads or anything right here. And here is the actual like, uh, you know, information where they can see their billing and address. They also have their payment methods and so on and so forth. Here they can also update their payment method and they can delete their credit card from your website. And then also here is their account details where they can adjust the account details at any time. If you guys do wanna put this on your menu, all you gotta do is go over here to the menu section and then you guys can just add this to the menu. So for example, over here under pages, I'll go to view all. 
and then you can add the my account to the menu. But the Bloxy theme actually allows you guys to, you know, just add it to your, um, you know, to your actual menu. So uh, it's really up to you, right? So you guys can actually have it like as a, as a page right here, or you guys can just have it here as an icon. It's really up to you. You guys can go both ways. And once someone goes ahead and clicks on it, it will then take them to this page. Now, if a user is not like logged in and they did not buy anything, uh, you guys can actually set in the WooCommerce settings to actually prompt them to make an account. So here is the My Account page logged out. So you'll see they can log in here on the left side and they can also register and make an account directly on your WordPress website. But really quick, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Now, if you guys log in right here, it'll actually log you in with the admin credentials if you guys are, you know, uh, if you put the admin credentials. But I just wanna make sure that you guys do have this checked. So over here under general, you guys need to make sure that anyone can register. And this is important because this will allow people to uh, register on your website and make an account. So make sure that you guys do have membership checked and then click on save changes. And this will allow people to create accounts on your website. So that's pretty much it. I just wanna give you guys a quick reminder about the my account and registration. So with that said, let's just go ahead and move on to the next section. Okay, so in this part of the video, we'll be talking all about the WooCommerce settings. Now the WooCommerce settings allows you guys to adjust your taxes, adjust your shipping rates, and you guys can also integrate various payment gateways like Stripe and also PayPal. So in this part of the video, we're gonna go through all the options in the WooCommerce settings. And by the end of this video, you guys will be accepting credit card payments on your new e-commerce websites. Are you guys ready? Let's go. All right, party people. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to use the WooCommerce settings. We'll go through tax, shipping, and anything related to WooCommerce. We're also going to integrate payment gateways onto your website. So to get started, let's first go over here to WooCommerce, and now let's click on settings. So this is the general tab, right? This is where you're going to enter in your address. Now this is important because if you guys are shipping somewhere, tax and shipping rates will be uh, based off where your address is. So go ahead and put in your address of where you're located. If you guys are a digital store, you guys can just put a PO box for now or where your business was incorporated. Okay. Now the next is the general options. So where are you selling to? So are you selling to all countries? or specific countries. So over here, I'll put United States. You guys can add any country that you guys want to sell to. If you guys are a digital business or a global business, you can put all. If you're something like a brick and mortar store where you're selling products only in America, you can go ahead and put United States or any countries you guys want to sell to. Also, we can throw in like, uh, we can give Mexico and Canada some love, you know, cause they're right next to us, you know, we're really close. Shipping locations, ship to all countries you sell to. So you guys can actually address the specific shipping locations. I do think shipping to all countries you sell to makes the most sense. So next we have the default customer location. You guys can go ahead and select the uh, information they select, or you guys can even use geolocate if you guys wanna go that route. But if they're using a VPN, they're gonna have to disconnect it and purchase. So it really depends on you guys. We're going to make sure we enable taxes and calculations. We will be making use of a plugin that will automate all the taxes on your website so you guys don't have to do any of that whatsoever. Okay, I do want to enable the use of coupon codes. Now here we have currency options. Here you guys can select your currency. So if you guys use the franc or if you guys use the Vietnamese dong or whatever, you guys can go ahead and select your currency here. Once you guys select it, we'll then click on save changes. Okay. Next, we're gonna go over here and click on products. So this is the shop page. If you guys ever want to assign your current shop page as your shop page, or if you accidentally deleted it, you guys can just go ahead and reassign the shop page to this specific page. If you guys want to redirect to the cart page after they add something, you can check that. But that's only usually if you have one product. If you have multiple, I would not have that checked. Here we have the measurement units, and also you guys can enable reviews and product ratings. Okay, so I'll go ahead now and click on save changes. Here we have inventory where you guys can turn on stock management if you guys want to, and you guys can, you know, turn on low stock notifications and stuff like that. This is the person that will be notified when you guys currently run low on stock. Here is the low stock threshold. Now these are global settings, right? You guys can do this on a per product individual basis, but you can also do it for the entire store. So if you guys do set something like five, any product on your store that runs around five, uh, you'll be notified by this specific email. 
If you guys are out of stock threshold at zero, you'll also be notified again. Okay, you guys can also choose to hide this from the catalog just in case you don't want to show people how much you have in stock, right? Maybe this will just be like internal, like just for your team, right? So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. Here we have downloadable products. Um, these are just options where if you guys want to, you know, require login before download, you can check that. Next, we have the open in browser where you can open downloadable files in their browser instead of saving them onto the device. It's really up to you, right? So, I mean, these are kind of technical, but I would just leave everything as standard, maybe even require login. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, right? So that means they must make an account in order to purchase, okay? Next, we have the approved download directories. We're gonna go ahead and skip this for now. If you guys don't know what this is, let's just skip it. These are just some other general options that you guys might want to check out, but usually it doesn't apply to anybody, okay? So that is the products tab summed up. Now let's go ahead and talk about taxes. Everyone's favorite topic, yes, everyone loves taxes. So here we have tax options and prices are entered with tax. That means when you guys have your store over here and someone goes to your shop page or something like that, it's gonna show the prices with no tax. If you guys want to include tax on all of your products, you can put yes. That's strictly up to you. Next, we have the calculate tax based on what? Now, there are 12 states in America that actually require shop-based address. That means you're going to charge tax based off of where you are physically located or where your nexus is. So according to alvaro.com, here are the 12 base states. Now we're gonna install a plugin that will actually fix all this for you guys, but just in case you don't wanna install that plugin, these states right here will be required to charge tax based off their location, right? So Arizona, California, Mississippi, New Mexico, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, and Virginia. So depending on where you guys are located, you guys might need to change the uh, either the customer shipping address or the shop base address. In my specific case, I'm in Nevada, so I'm going to do customer shipping address because Nevada is not listed here. So next we have shipping tax class, and we'll come back to this a little bit later. This will make a little bit more sense once we create some tax brackets. Rounding, you guys can choose to round your taxes up. And here you guys can exclude taxes in the prices in the shop and also exclude them in the cart, which makes more sense, right? You usually show tax, usually at checkout, right? So I'll go ahead now and click on save changes. Okay, so over here, I'll click on standard rates. Now, again, we're going to install a plugin that will actually do all this for us, but I first wanna educate you guys on what exactly is standard rates and reduced rates or zero rates, just in case you guys want to do taxes yourself. So we're gonna simplify taxes as much as we can to make this as easy as possible for you guys. Now, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna click on insert row right here. Now, here you have a few different tabs. We have country, state, zip, city, the tax rates, and then some other options right here. Now, the very first thing that you're gonna do is enter in your country code. If you guys don't know your country code, you guys can click on country code, and this will bring up this Wikipedia article. And if you guys scroll down, you guys will see a list of country codes. So for example, Albania is AL, uh, Algeria is DZ, American Samoa, oh, okay, that's AS, and so on and so forth, right? So you guys can use these country codes right here. So I'll go back over here. Now I'm in the United States, so I'm gonna put US, right? United States. Next we have the state code. Now, if you guys are in America and you guys don't know your state code, guys, you know, learn them, okay? But uh, you guys can use this other website. This is the US Bureau of Labor Statistics where they have all of the state codes right here. I will leave all these articles that I'm talking about in the description below this video for you guys to check out on your own free time, right? So California is CA, right? So let's go back over here under state code. I'm gonna put CA, right? And here we have the zip and the city, which I'm gonna skip because obviously I'm just gonna charge one sales tax rate for California. And here we have the sales tax rate. So what is the sales tax for California? Well, let's find out. So this is taxchart.com and I've used this site for a very long time. And this will actually show you the sales tax by state for all the states. So for example, North Dakota, 5%, Minnesota, 6.875%, New Hampshire, zero sales tax. Whew. If you guys buy a car there, you know, you don't have to pay any sales tax. So think about that. Maybe you guys can incorporate a business there or something. Oof, you know, that's not advice, but <laughs> you don't have to pay sales tax. So let's go ahead and take a look at California, right? So, so here's California, right? It's 7.25. So we're gonna take this sales tax rate and we're gonna put it on our websites. So for the rates, I'm gonna put 7.25%. 
Now, here you have priority. Now, only if you guys have multiple conflicting tax laws, you guys might want to set a priority. So one is actually the higher one, and then two and three and so forth. There is some instances where you guys are gonna use this, but for most of you guys, it's not gonna apply, so don't worry about it. Next, we have compound. So do you want to actually charge compound tax rates on top of each other? For example, if you guys charge 7.25, but then also charge another tax rate, like maybe a pollution tax or something, do you guys want those to be compounded, right? If you guys do, you guys can click on check. But again, for most of us, it won't apply. Now this one actually does. So here we have shipping. So do you tax on top of the shipping? Well, how do we know? Let's go back to tax char. So tax char will actually let us know if shipping is taxable. And there are some states actually where you do need to uh, tax for shipping. So here are the states. We have Connecticut, Georgia, Kentucky, but it looks like California is not on this list. So in this specific case, I am not gonna charge tax on top of shipping, okay? So I'm going to make sure that is unchecked and then click on save changes. And that is it guys, that is as easy as it is. All you gotta do is just go ahead and insert to your states and you guys are all good to go. Now there is a discrepancy. This does get a little bit more advanced, right? There is something called origin-based and also destination-based sales tax rates. Now, if you guys are in a state that is origin-based, you guys are gonna charge sales tax based where you guys are physically located and where your business is at, right? Or your nexus. So here are the states, right? So Arizona, California, Illinois, Mississippi and so on and so forth. So you're gonna charge sales tax based off where your business is physically located only, not where you're shipping products, okay? So California is a origin-based state. Now, there is also something called destination-based, and this is where things can get a little tricky. So destination-based are states where you have to charge sales tax where the item is physically being delivered. So for example, if you guys ship a product from Arkansas to Colorado, then you have to charge the Colorado sales tax even though you're in Arkansas, right? So here are a list of all of these states, right? So we have Idaho, Kansas, so on and so forth. And this is where things can get a little sticky, right? So let me give you an example of the destination-based example, right? So let's go back over here. So I'm going to now get rid of California. And I'm now going to imagine I am in Nevada because Nevada is a destination-based sales tax state. So over here, I'm gonna go enter in Nevada, right? And what I'm gonna do is go back over here and we're gonna find the sales tax for Nevada, which is 6.85. And we're gonna put that in, right? 85. Do we charge for shipping? Well, I have to see. See, is Nevada on this list? Nevada is not on this list, so we are gonna uncheck this box, okay? So now I'm gonna click on save changes. So if you guys are a destination-based sales tax state, then you wanna make sure that you guys include your state first. Now, if you guys are an e-commerce website that is actually selling over state lines, then you're gonna to have to insert all of the states in America, which can be very, very tedious. So just to give you guys an example, I'll click on insert row, and I'll go back over here, and I'll say, okay, now we gotta enter Washington, okay? Washington is 6.85, I'm sorry, 6.5. So US, WA, and then the rate for Washington, 6.5, and we are not gonna charge there. And then I'll click on save changes. So if you guys are in a destination-based state, you guys will have to go through and put all the states for your business. Can be very tedious, guys, but uh, that's just what goes on. So if you guys want to learn more, you guys can always contact uh, TaxJar and get more information. But not to worry, we're going to install a plugin that will actually automate all that for you guys, so don't worry about it, all right? So that's an example of destination-based and origin-based. I hope that was clear. Hope that made a little bit of sense, right? So I'm going to go back and insert my state right here of California of 7.25, okay? Now let's say, for example, you guys want to charge a sales tax for different countries. Maybe you guys are an international business where you do e-commerce in multiple countries. Well, then we need to charge sales tax from those countries. So here is Mexico, and we're gonna charge a sales tax rate of 16%, which is pretty high, right? So here I'll put 16%, and then I'll click on Save Changes. Okay, so in America, we are charging a flat rate of 7.25, and Mexico, we are charging them a 16% rate because that's what the Mexican government ordered. Okay, you guys got that? So that's an example of standard rates, just in case you guys were not familiar. Now let's go ahead and talk about reduced rates and also zero rates. 
Now, why would you have a reduced rates? Well, there are some products that actually have specific special taxes and fees versus other products. If you guys are selling products like some of these products here on the list, then you guys will have to charge a specific tax based off what you are selling. Now, I'll go ahead and leave this article in the description. This is from the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. So for example, if you guys are selling I guess the vapes, right? Yeah, electronic cigarettes, you're gonna charge a sales tax of 12.5, okay? So what we're gonna do over here is we're going to just imagine that I'm like a vape store, right? And I have to charge a sales tax of 12.5, right? So California, and then here 12.5, okay? We're gonna take that out, and then I will click on save changes. So we added a reduced rates, right? Now we're gonna add one more. We're gonna add zero rates. There are some products that have zero rates like digital products. Did you guys know digital products have no sales tax in California? So what we're gonna do over here is we're also gonna create a sales tax rate of 0%, okay? So now that we created these rates, we now need to assign them. So standard rates is actually the default. This is going to apply for all the products on our store. However, reduced rates and zero rates we're going to actually assign these two specific products, okay? So over here, let's go to products and click on all products. And for example, right here, we have this PDF download that I you know, quickly created. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down now and for the tax class, I'm gonna select zero rate. That's because this product obviously has no taxes. So I'm gonna go ahead and update. So if someone tries to check this out on the cart, they will be charged zero sales tax on my website, right? Okay, now let's go find another product. Here, click on all products. And uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, let's see if we can uh, work something out here really quick. All right, so this glove right here. Here, click on edit. Now we're just gonna pretend that this is actually like a vape, right? So this is a vaporizer, okay? So for this specific tax class, they're gonna be charged a reduced rate, or not a reduced rate, guys, just like a different rate. You guys can rename this anything that you want, right? But uh, we're just gonna put this under the reduced rate class, and then we're gonna click on updates, okay? So essentially, this glove will be charged a different sales tax rate. If you guys also do wanna change the name of the taxes, you guys can. So over here under settings, if we scroll down over here to, oh no, if we go over here to tax, under the additional taxes, this is where you guys can actually rename it. So this would be like, you know, vape tax, right? This would just basically help you understand what, uh, you know, what you're charging on your website and so on and so forth, okay? So that is an example of the standard rates. Okay, so to sum this up, guys, our standard rate for our store is 7.25%. However, if we are selling vapes on our store, we have to charge a special tax of 12.5. And for our digital products, we don't charge any sales tax whatsoever. So that is tax summed up. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you guys do wanna learn more about it, I have a video coming out and I will leave that in the description below of this video. Also, there is this really cute video that I found on the internet that actually explains things really well with origin base and destination base. So I'll also go ahead and put this in the description below of this video. So that's just a quick crash course on taxes, but we're going to install a free plugin that's going to integrate the TaxChart API to handle all the taxes for us, no matter where we're located. That is the great part about WooCommerce. So over here, plugins, let's click on add new. Over here, we're gonna type in WooCommerce shipping. And here's a plugin you guys will need to install. It is called WooCommerce shipping and tax. I'll go ahead and click on install now. Then I'll click on activate, okay? Now you guys will need to connect your website with WooCommerce, so right here, I'll click on connect. All right, we're gonna go ahead and click on continue. Now you guys will need to make a wordpress.com account. I don't know why they do this, guys, to be honest. It's really annoying and stupid, but uh, yeah, you're gonna have to make a account with wordpress.com in order to use this plugin. So I'll go ahead and log in. Then I'll click on approve. And that's it. So now we have automated tax calculations and we can also print shipping labels directly on our websites. How about that? How easy is that? It's awesome, right? All right, so let's go back over here to WooCommerce and let's click on settings. Let's go ahead and now and click on tax. And here now we have the option for automated taxes. I wanna go ahead and enable automated taxes, scroll to the bottom and then click on save changes. And that's it, we're done. So now all of the taxes and all that headache crap will be taken care of 
all that for us. So that is amazing. Next, let's go ahead now and talk about shipping. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about shipping, right? So let's just keep this very basic and let's just click on add zone right here. And we're gonna add a shipping zone. Okay, so the first one is gonna be United States, right? United States, right? Here I'm gonna go ahead and put, uh, I guess they redid this, right? North America, okay, I'll just click on United States, right? Now, just to get started with, I'm gonna put United States and that's it, right? So this is gonna apply to all states, okay? Here I'll click on add a shipping method. And here we have three options. We have free shipping, flat rates, and local pickup. So right here, I'm gonna get started with flat rates and then click on continue. So what do you wanna charge as a flat rate? Well, I'm gonna put something like maybe, I don't know, $5, right? So $5 is our flat rate for shipping. Is this taxable? If it is, you'll put taxable. If not, you'll go ahead and put no. For Nevada, it's not, so I'm just going to put no. Then I'll click on create, okay? So essentially what I've done here, guys, is I've actually created a shipping rate for the entire United States, right? Does that make sense so far? Okay. So now let's get a little bit more creative, right? Now let's go ahead and create different shipping prices for specific areas. So over here, I'll click on shipping zones. So right here we have the United States, right? But what about people in Nevada, right? We're probably gonna charge them less because we're already in Nevada. So let's go ahead and add a new shipping zone. So this will be Nevada. And here, I'll just type in Nevada and I'll just select Nevada, United States. So right here, I'll add a shipping method. You know, for people in Nevada, you know, I'm just gonna give them free shipping, guys, because they're very close to us. I don't wanna charge them shipping, right? Not unless you guys are shipping like refrigerators or something, <laughs> you know, then you like, then you have to charge them, right? But I'll just give them free shipping, right? Free shipping requires what? A minimum order amount, a coupon code, or both, right? I'll just go ahead and put uh, no requirements, right? If you guys do want a requirement, you guys can go ahead and select that, right? But for now, I'll go ahead and put no requirements and then I'll click on create. All right, cool. So the people of Nevada get free shipping. How about that, right? But let's just get a little bit more technical here. Let's say people around the United States purchase something and they spend a lot of money. I might wanna give them free shipping, right? So let's do that. Over here, I'll go ahead and click on edit under the United States. And over here, I wanna add a new shipping method. So I'm gonna click on free shipping and click on continue. So free shipping requires what? I'm gonna put a minimum order amount of $50. So if someone spends $50 or more on my store, they will get free shipping included if they spend 50 bucks. Okay, all right. Okay, so now we can see we've applied the flat rates and free shipping. So now let's click on shipping zones. Now the next one is rest of the world, right? So sometimes guys, people might buy something in areas that they're not supposed to, like maybe there's an error, maybe the people of Puerto Rico buy something, but you don't necessarily want to cancel the sale. You guys can actually use a fallback option called rest of the world. So I'll click on edit over here and then I'll add a shipping method. So let's say someone in Colombia buys my product, right? I didn't really assign anything for Colombia, so I'm just gonna charge a default flat rate of $10 because it is a little farther, right? So I'll just go ahead and create this. So this means like if somehow there's an accident or something like that, I don't necessarily want to, you know, halt business, but I will charge them a flat rate of $10. So now that we set these shipping rates, now let's go ahead and talk about the shipping settings right here. Okay, so here are just some general shipping settings where you can enable the shipping calculator on the cart page, or you can hide the cost. Here you can do the shipping destination price, such as the customer billing address, or to their default shipping address. I think this actually makes a lot more sense. So for a shipping destination, make sure you guys do select the shipping address, because for billing address, some people actually do have a different billing address than their house, right? So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. Now the next is classes, and this is actually very important. So let's say for example, you guys are selling something that is heavy, right? Or if something is very light, you probably should charge a different shipping price based off of the product, not necessarily the location. So right here, I'll put heavy, right? Heavy packages, right? This is for big products. This is just for us, right? So I'll go ahead and create this. 
And then I'll add one more right here. So add shipping class. And this will be light. Light stuff, light packages. And then for light products. Whoops, products, okay. And I'll click on create. Okay, so now let's go ahead and assign these to our shipping. So over here, I'll click on shipping zones. Now let's first go ahead and click on United States, right? So over here, I'll click on edits. And here we have flat rates. I'll go ahead now and click on edit. So here we have these two new options, right? We have heavy shipping class cost, and we also have light. So let's say, for example, that I already know that it might cost more. So I want to create some sort of fallback option so I'm not stuck, you know, paying extra for shipping, right? So I'll go ahead and create the heavy class cost as $10. For the lights, I'll just go ahead and put something like $1, right? And the next one is the no shipping class cost. So if you guys do have no shipping, but some products actually require some sort of price because maybe they're really heavy, you guys can just go ahead and say, you know what, I'll go ahead and assign that to some products, okay? So here we have two types, right? We have per class and we have per order. So per class, you'll charge shipping for each shipping class individually. Or you guys can do per order, which is charge shipping for the most expensive shipping class. I would definitely select per class right here because per order, if someone adds it to the cart, it's just going to pick the most expensive shipping class and that means the other products won't be charged. So I definitely think per class makes a lot more sense. Then I'll click on save. Okay, so now that I've done that, we now need to assign this to specific products. So let's go over here and click on all products. Now we're gonna scroll down and here I'll click on this basketball net and I'll click on edit. Now the basketball net, this actually might require a large box, right? And it actually might be a little heavy. You know, it just really depends on, you know, how big it is, right? So what I wanna do here is under the shipping. So under shipping, here we have shipping class. I wanna now assign this to heavy. And that essentially means that this will be charged an additional price just because it's very large, right? So I'll go ahead now and click on updates. Okay. And just an example, I'll go ahead and do another one right here. Uh, what, do we, what do we got over here? We'll do the outdoor lamp. I'll just say this is light, you know, just for tutorial sake, right? So over here under the shipping, I'll just say that this is light. So that means this will be charged an extra dollar, right? Here, I'll go ahead and click on update. Now, just to be clear, they're gonna pay shipping tax, but they're also gonna be charged an additional price for these specific products. You guys got that? Okay. Now let's go back over here to settings and go back to shipping. So here is the shipping zones. Currently right now we have United States covered, right? We have Nevada covered. You guys can also add as many states or regions as you guys want. Another very good common practice if you guys are in America is you guys can also create regions for Mexico and also Canada, right? So this will be Mexico. I'll just type it in Mexico, right? And people in Mexico are going to be charged a flat rate of something like, you know, maybe 10 bucks or $9, right? $9, right? And then I'll click on create. And then we'll do one more for Canada, right? So add a zone and we'll just throw in one more for Canada. And then we'll, uh, we'll reevaluate what's going on right here. So Canada, you guys are gonna be charged a rate. Uh, let's just do uh, $4, right? $4, okay. And there we go. So let's take a look here. We have United States being charged for the entire United States at a specific shipping rate. We have the state of Nevada that offers free shipping because we are physically in Nevada. We are also charging Mexico a different rate and we're also charging Canada a specific rate just because they're pretty close, right? They're not too far. And then we have rest of the world and this will charge a specific rate to regions that are not located right here. Okay, you guys got that? All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and take a look at local pickup. Local pickup is where you guys can enable local pickup, where people can just go ahead and pick up the uh, products from your store if you wanna go that route. Here we have WooCommerce shipping. So here we have shipping labels, and once you guys actually sell products on your store, you guys can print shipping labels right here. All you gotta do is integrate your credit card, and then you guys can go ahead and uh, get shipping labels for your products. So you can just go to the post office, give them the label, and everything is all good and set. Okay. Next, I'll click on save changes here. So let's go ahead now and test out the tact and also the shipping. Okay, so let's go over here to shop and let's do some shopping. All right, here we go. I'm gonna buy these 
uh, cool shoes for $70. Then I'll click on view card. Okay, so here are the cool shoes. And right away, you guys will see here on the right side, we have shipping, it's going to go to Seattle. But we actually have the option for free shipping because we have made a purchase over $50. So now let's go ahead and buy something that costs less than 50 bucks and let's see what happens. All right, so we got these shoes right here and let's add this to the cart. So we have one product in the cart. Here, I'll click on view cart. Okay, so here we have the shipping right here. And you're going to see that we're going to be charged a rate of $5. We're going to be charged a rate of $5 because right here, the rate is five bucks. It did not meet the criteria of the heavy and the light, and we didn't enter anything for the shipping class costs. So that's why we're being charged $5, right? Pretty simple, right? Pretty self-explanatory as you guys can tell. So now let's say, for example, I add two of these and let's see what happens to the cart. So I'll add in two. And now you're gonna see that we have the option for free shipping because we have spent more than $50. I hope this makes sense. If you guys do have any questions about shipping, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so let's go ahead now and skip payments and let's go to accounts and privacy. Okay, so the account and privacy is very important. So these options right here will create accounts for people who purchase products on your store. The first one is allowing customers to place orders without an account. If you guys do want them to create something, like then you'll have to go ahead and say, you guys must create an account right here and you'll uncheck that box, right? And then also right here, this is good to add. So if they do actually want to place an order, they can just log in to their existing account during checkout, which is a very fast and convenient process. These two options right here will automatically create a username for them once they have purchased something on your website. Also, you guys might want to have this checked right here. This will allow users to create an account on the My Account page, okay? Here we have data erasure requests. You guys can let users request to have their personal data deleted from your store. And here is the privacy policy and the registration and checkout information, right? And then here is the personal data retention. This essentially will automatically delete data after a certain period has passed. So you guys can always uh, adjust these to like days, weeks, months, or years. Okay. Okay. Next we have emails. So these are emails that are sent to you and your customer. So right here, you'll see new order, canceled order, and failed order. These emails will be automatically sent to you guys right here. So here are the email notifications. Now these are emails that are sent to you and also your customers. So right here, we have new order, canceled order, and failed order. These three emails will be sent to you. These other emails right here will be sent to customers. So when there is a completed order, a refunded order, reset password, or a new account, they will be notified via email. If you guys want to customize these emails, all you got to do right here is click on manage. And this is where you guys can change the email. So right here, you can change the subject and the email heading, and then also the content of the email, right? Once you guys edit it, you can click on save changes and that will basically uh, you know, apply to that specific email. Now, when customers purchase something, they're gonna get this specific email right here. So I'll go ahead and click on manage. So here is the email that they're going to receive. So it's gonna say, you know, your latest invoice, here is their purchase receipts. You can adjust the heading and then also add in some additional contents. Now, WooCommerce did a pretty terrible job at uh, setting up emails, to be honest, because there is no visual way on how to design it. However, there is a free plugin that you guys can use that can actually visually change how emails are sent. And you guys can also add an element like text, button, very similar to Elementor. So I'm going to go ahead and just recommend that you guys do install this plugin. It is a great way on how to actually uh, fully customize the emails that are sent from your website. Over here under plugins, let's click on add new. And up here, we're gonna type in email customizer. So here's the plugin, it's called Yaymail WooCommerce Email Customizer. And this will actually allow you guys to fully design and customize the WooCommerce emails. So I'll go ahead and click on install and then I'll click on activate. Okay, once you guys do that over here, you'll see Yaymail. I'll just go ahead and click on the yay commerce icon and then it'll prompt you right here now this is the actual email builder and you guys can actually just drag in elements right here and fully design this page it's very similar to elementor right so if you click on it you can adjust the color and the font and the radius and all this other cool stuff right here now here at the top you're going to see new order customer invoice and so on and so forth so i know this might sound like a lot of work guys but you'll need to go through here and adjust 
each specific email. So over here we have customer email invoice. Here I'll click on no, don't save. And this is the email that you guys can design with. And this is sent when someone purchases something on your websites. So you guys can go through here, adjust everything to your specific liking. Now there is one more recommendation you guys can do. So if you guys don't want to custom build every email from scratch, you guys can use the cadence email customizer. So over here, I'll type in cadence WooCommerce. And you guys can also use this one right here. Now this one will actually just assign all your templates to a specific style. So you can't independently design each one, one by one. So right here, I'll click on activate. Now I should probably disable this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead now and disable this one, right? So we'll just take that one off just because we don't want the plugins to conflict. And then right here, I'll click on open email designer. Okay, so right here, you guys will see we have pre-built templates and they have a few different templates you guys can use, right? I think they only have like three, so I'll just use this one here. They also have this new fluid one where you can download it from their website. You just gotta give them your email address and they will give you uh, this template right here as well. But uh, I'll just go ahead and just select this one right here and then go to the bottom and click on load templates and okay. All right, cool, so this is gonna be our new email. And now you'll have to go through here, like the email and go to the heading, and then you'll go ahead and adjust things like the color and so on and so forth. So this will actually apply for all of your emails. And uh, yeah, it'll take some time to customize it, but you guys can use this free plugin to send out really nice looking emails instead of those really ugly, bland, boring emails that are sent uh, from WooCommerce. Okay, so that is email summed up. Make sure that you guys do spend the time to, you know, design those and make them look nice and pretty and, you know, cute, okay. Next we have integration. So the integration tab, this is just for developers. You guys don't need to do anything here. And then here we have the advanced tab. Now the advanced tab, this probably shouldn't be under advanced because this actually applies a lot of the time to individuals. So if you guys do delete your My Account page, you can always create a new page from scratch and then just assign that page here. The same thing with the cart page. If you delete the cart page, you can assign it here. And the same thing for the checkout and also the terms of I'm sorry, the terms and condition, okay? So that is pretty much a majority of the settings with WooCommerce. And then here we have the endpoints, but these are all just fine, so we don't need to adjust any of these. So at the bottom, I'll click on Save Changes. Okay, so that is pretty much it for all of the WooCommerce settings. We went through products, we went through tax, shipping, payments, accounts, and pretty much all of the WooCommerce settings. The next thing we need to do is we now need to integrate some payment gateways so we can all start making money. Woo, congratulations. Okay, now we're going to install two plugins and these are amazing payment gateways. So over here, I'm gonna scroll down and go to plugins and let's click on add new. So we're gonna integrate Stripe first, right? So let's type in S-T-R-I-P-E. So we're going to integrate this payment gateway right here. Now this is a free plugin, doesn't cost you guys anything whatsoever. So I'll go ahead and install this plugin and then I'll click on activate. Okay, now really quick, we're gonna be integrating stripe.com. Now stripe.com is a free service that does not cost you guys anything whatsoever. There is no credit check and there is no fee to get started with. All you guys need to do is link your bank account and they will transfer the money from your store to your bank account. Then I'll also be showing you guys how to integrate PayPal as well. PayPal is a free service. You guys can make a free business account and PayPal is pretty popular, right? So you guys can use PayPal as well and integrate that on your WordPress websites. Now there are other various payment gateways. Um, I'm not gonna be covering all of them because there are tons of them out there, but I'll just be covering the two most popular ones, which is Stripe and PayPal, okay? So the first thing we have to do is we need to first install the plugin to integrate Stripe. So over here, I'll go ahead and click on add new. And then right here, I'll type in Stripe, S-T-R-I-P-E. Here is the plugin. I'll go ahead now and click on install now, and then I'll click on activate. Okay. Now let's go back over here to WooCommerce and let's click on settings. Over here, I'll click on payments. And now we're gonna scroll down right here and under Stripe, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Now it's going to say create or connect an account. So I'll go ahead and connect my accounts. Okay, so I went ahead and I logged in. Now I already have multiple accounts with stripe.com. So I'm going to use this demo business for now. So right here, I'll click on my accounts 
and then it'll click on connect. Now, obviously you guys will have to go and make your own account with stripe.com. You'll go through the setup process, submit verification. And then once you guys do that, you guys will be able to link your account with WooCommerce. Okay, so now I've pretty much logged in with Stripe. Now there's one more thing I have to do. Now right here, you guys can turn on test mode if you guys want to, or if you guys want live payments, you'll uncheck that. And now you guys can accept real credit cards on your websites. Now scrolling down here, you're gonna see that we have this link, right? So I'll go ahead and copy this link. Okay, so this is my Stripe account right here. And as you guys can tell, I've run a few demos and a few demo purchases, but let's go ahead now and add a webhook. Okay, so at the top right, you're gonna see developers. I'll click on developers, and then we're gonna click on webhooks. At the right side, you're gonna see add an endpoints. Here, click on add an endpoints. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste that URL in there. All right, so I'm gonna paste that right here. Here is the URL again, just in case you guys are not sure, you'll just go ahead and copy this and then paste that right here. You're gonna let Stripe know what you're doing with this. So I'm gonna put using for e-commerce websites. And over here we have select events. So under the charge, I'm gonna select, select all charge events, and then I'll click on add events. Once I do that, I'll scroll to the bottom, then I'll click on add an endpoint. All right, cool. Next, you'll see signing secrets. I'll click on reveal. Then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste this onto my website. So let's go back over here. You'll see edit account keys. And I just wanna paste that under the live right here. So make sure it's not test, right? Make sure it's live, right? I'll go ahead and paste that. And then I'll click on save live keys. All right, cool. So if you guys did everything successfully, you'll see that we have three check boxes. So now we have payment gateways integrated on our e-commerce website. Pretty cool, right? Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and quickly enable test mode, right? Just to walk you guys through a transaction. So I'll go ahead and click on the edit account keys and I'm gonna enter in my test information. So if you guys do want to enable test mode over here, I'll enable test mode. And then let's see, view all test mode items. Okay, here I'll click on API keys. I'll publish this. All right, this is my publishable key. And then also we have our secret key. I'll paste that here. And then for the webhook secrets, it's gonna be the same exact thing, right? So I'm gonna to go to webhooks, add an endpoint, and then I'm going to paste in this URL here, right? I'll go ahead and paste that there. Just put e-commerce and the same thing, right? Select events, charge, charge all events, add events, and then add an endpoint. I'll then take this and then I will copy this and we are all set and ready to rock and roll. There we go. Then I'll click on save test keys. And now you guys will see that we can now run test transactions on our websites. Pretty cool, right? So once you guys are done at the bottom, I'll click on save changes. Okay. Now let's run a live test transaction. Let's give it a try. Huh? Let's go ahead and go to our shop. I'll go ahead and buy these cool shoes, right? Buy these cool shoes, really nice product page. View the cart, I already have some in my cart actually, huh? cool. Here I go to proceed to checkouts. I'll go ahead and put in my information. All right, so I went and entered my information. Now I'm gonna scroll to the bottom right here and under the Stripe credit card, I'm just going to enter in some demos, right? So 4242, this is actually a test transaction right here. So don't worry, this is not a real credit card, okay? I'll just put something in here, right? I'll save this. Now, if Stripe is successfully linked, it will then successfully charge the payments. So at the bottom, I'll click on place order. And voila, we now have this beautiful checkout page where we have our order number, we have the date, the total price, the email, we have the order details, and then we have the billing information and also the shipping address. Pretty cool, right? So now let's go to stripe.com. Let's go over here. And let's just refresh the page. All right, cool. So right away, you'll see our balance is a lot higher, 141. And then you guys are gonna see right here that we have now got that purchase. So you'll see it just hit our accounts and voila. So Stripe is linked. And if you guys do wanna take real credit cards, all you gotta do is just turn this off and then enter in the credentials like I just showed you guys earlier. So congratulations, we have successfully integrated stripe.com. Now I'll be showing you guys how to integrate PayPal, which is actually a lot easier. 
Over here, let's go to dashboard and now let's integrate the PayPal payment gateway. So over here, I'll go to add new plugin and then we're going to type in PayPal. And we're gonna use this plugin right here, WooCommerce PayPal Payments. So I'll click on install now. Then I'll click on activate. All right, cool. So once that's done, I'll go back over here to WooCommerce and then I'll click on settings. I'll go over here to payments and let's scroll down, just keep scrolling. Here we go, we got PayPal. I'll go ahead and turn this on. Okay, once that's done, right here it's going to say accept all major credit cards and we're gonna use standard processing. There is a criteria to use the advanced card processing. I'm not really sure what it is. So if you guys do wanna learn more about that, just give them a phone call and they can run you by what that is. Here, I'll go ahead and click on activate PayPal. Now, all you guys need to do here is just log in with your PayPal accounts and it's linked. It's really simple. So I'll go ahead and enter in my email. Okay, I'll go ahead and log in. All right, once you guys log in, I'll then click on agree and connect. And then I'll click on back to WooCommerce. Okay, so now that we've integrated those payment gateways, there are some payment gateways that I do want to mention, just in case you guys want to mix it up. If you guys are in South America, you guys can use a payment gateway called Mercado Pago. So Mercado Pago. This is actually a very popular payment gateway in South America. So you guys can use this one right here if you guys are in South America. Stripe is not available in every country in South America. So you guys can use this if you guys are having any issues. If you guys are in Africa, you guys can use Paystack. Paystack is South Africa and also I think uh, the Sub-Saharan Africa region. You guys can use this specific payment gateway. This is primarily for Africa. So if you guys don't see your country on the list of Stripe, you guys can always use Paystack. If you guys are in the Middle East, you guys can use a payment gateway called authorize.net. So if I type in authorize, here is the payment gateway you guys can use. You guys can also use one called My Fatora. And lastly, if you guys are one of those people that you see use Square, you guys can also use Square and you guys can integrate the uh, Square onto your WooCommerce websites. So uh, yeah, there are several payment gateways to choose from and all you gotta do is just look for it and I'm sure it'll be there because there are tons of payment gateways for WooCommerce. Lastly, now let's talk about orders. So we did order something, right? Over here under WooCommerce, I'll click on orders. So here is a list of all of the orders that are on your website. You'll see right here, we have a order pending. So let's go ahead now and click on it. Okay, so here is the order details. You'll see what was purchased. You'll see the shipping. You'll also see this information right here, such as the price and then also the Stripe fee. Here you have the revenue of the purchase and then you also have the customer history as well. You guys can also choose different actions. You guys can email this to the customer. You can resend this or you can just download it, right? I'll go ahead and scroll down. If you guys do wanna create shipping labels, since we integrated the PayPal automated taxes, you guys can go ahead and click on this and create a shipping label. And it's really cool. So you guys can just go ahead and use this address here. And what they're gonna do is that they're gonna generate a, a label for you guys. And all you gotta do is basically print it and then put it on the package. So I'm back over here on my email and you'll see that the order has been received. So I'll go ahead and click on it. And then right here, you guys will see that we have the order and all that information. So all this will be sent to your customers. So everything's automated, everything's really convenient. It will take time to design everything, but overall, you guys have successfully built an e-commerce website. Okay, so now that we went through a majority of the options for WooCommerce, now let me show you guys how to create coupon codes. So down here, you'll see this marketing tab. Right here, I'll click on coupons. You guys are gonna see I have tons of coupons, right? So up here, I'll click on add coupon. Now go ahead and give your coupon code a name. Now this is gonna be the actual discount code that users enter on your website. So make sure it's something unique. So I'll put Daryl 30 and this grants 30% off. Now this is just for internal purposes. So users will not see this description. They will only see like the actual coupon code, right? So here we have discount type and you guys do have a variety of options. You guys have percentage discounts. This will give a percentage off the entire cart at checkout. You guys have fixed cart discounts. This will give a dollar amount 
off the cart. And then you have fixed product discounts where you can apply specific, you know, discounts on products, right? But for general purposes, I'll just select percentage discount off the entire cart. So how much are we gonna give off the cart? Well, up at 30%. So this coupon code will give 30% off whatever's in the cart. Does this grant free shipping? You guys can check this box if you guys want free shipping. When does this expire? Well, I'll just say like, you know, near the end of the month sort of thing, right? Here we have usage restriction. So what is the minimum spend for this specific coupon code? Well, I'll just say like $100, right? Maximum spends, I'm not really gonna put a maximum because I don't want them to be limited to spend money on my website, right? Uh, individual use. So does this stack with other coupon codes? If you guys want it to not stack with other coupon codes, make sure that you guys enter that check mark. Exclude sale items. This will actually exclude any items that you guys currently have on sale. You guys can also go ahead and include or exclude specific products. You could include specific product categories or exclude categories. Now by default, this will work for all products and all product categories, right? So it doesn't really matter what you guys enter right here. This is only if you guys actually select the fixed product discount, right? And then the next one is the usage limits. So this is basically saying, how many times can this coupon code be used? Well, 100 times. How many times can this coupon code be used for specific items? I'll just leave that as blank. And then how many times can this coupon code be used per user? I'll just say like two times, right? Or maybe just one time, right? So that is the general settings for my coupon. So I'll go ahead and publish this coupon code. All right, now let's go to our cart. Okay, so I went ahead and I randomly added a bunch of stuff to the cart. So my total is $829.10. I'm going to now apply the coupon code Daryl30 and then click on apply. And you guys are gonna see that we got a 30% discount. So we saved $215.98 and our new total is $597.47. So that is how you guys can apply coupon codes to your website. I do have another video coming that's more detailed about coupon codes. And when that's finished, I'll put that in the description below of this video. All right, party people, well, congratulations on building your e-commerce website. Now I have two parting gifts for you guys. Once you guys build your website, you guys will need to integrate an SEO plugin. I recommend using Yoast or also the all-in-one SEO plugin. This will actually display your website in the search engine. And I have two videos right here that are ranking number one on YouTube. So if you guys do build your store and you guys need to integrate the SEO plugin, you guys can use this. And I highly recommend to integrate an SEO plugin because that will make your website found on the Google search results. Also, there might be other things that you guys need to do. I have this video right here about 12 important things you guys need to do after you guys install your website, this is actually very important, such as integrating your analytics and also integrating the Google search console. So make sure to also watch this video. And by the end of it, you guys will be e-commerce pros. All right, party people. Thank you guys so much for watching this e-commerce website. From here, it's a journey, right? Now you can go ahead and market your website. You can drive traffic. You can use TikTok, or your apps, and then you guys can start making money with your e-commerce websites. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. Also, do me a favor, you know, like this video and let me know in the comments, you know, what kind of, uh, how you thought this video was, you know, I do spend a long time making these videos. In fact, this took me like two months to make because we have to make the website. We have to give you guys the templates. We have to structure everything perfectly, you know, so you guys have a good learning experience. So I do hope you guys enjoy this video. Once again, my name is Daryl Wilson and I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.